excelsior and welcome everybody i've always wanted to say that uh welcome to marvel multiverse the day of doom it's only after i committed to everything that i realized that doomsday is a shorter way of saying that but that's dc's thing right this is this is something else entirely uh welcome to my first foray into the marvel multiverse official marvel ttrpg uh i'm very excited i'm joined by some lovely faces uh who i am going to have uh, introduce themselves and say a little bit, a bit about their characters characters which you might be familiar with if you are familiar with marvel a ragtag team of superheroes who i am going to throw into perilous situation after perilous situation and watch them overcome as heroes are meant to do uh yes this is really exciting i've i've pulled together some of my my favorite villains i i have uh like i said a fantastic cast and all of this is in support of pcrf palestine children's relief fund uh palestine children's relief fund is one of our ongoing philanthropies that we support here at sword and key uh and is is an important cause uh that that we have put a lot of money towards already and continue to do so there are i should say incentives uh for donating that you can impact this game so for five dollars you can provide edge which is a type of advantage uh you can provide trouble for ten dollars which is a type of disadvantage uh, and you can also provide fantastic successes and fantastic failures uh both of which move the story forward and uh those are for twenty dollars and thirty dollars respectively uh and uh, again impact this game you can think of those as like critical successes and the other one's like a critical failure that also provides success it moves the story forward in a way that you know superhero stories often do you you fall backwards into a weapons cache you might be on your ass but now you're surrounded by things you can use so uh, if you uh, if you are just joining us, thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's great to, to do this for an audience. Uh, you can donate, I should note, through the link that's in chat through our socials at any time and impact this game. So if you happen to be watching this, you know, as a VOD on Wednesday, you can still donate and impact whatever the next game is. And they just will, will stack up as things go. Uh, so uh, it's much appreciated. Like I said, it's a great cause. If you have a couple extra dollars sitting around, always very much appreciated. Uh, let's go ahead and go around, have these lovely people introduce themselves, and uh, talk a little bit about about what character they are playing today. Uh, so I'm, oh, this is an odd shape that that Eva has provided me with on this this um, this. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let's start. I'm just gonna go, I guess, in a circle, starting with me. So I will start with Jen. Uh, Jen, hi. Uh, a little bit about yourself and who you're playing. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Jen, my pronouns are they, she, a little bit about me, I am an AP performer, producer, and pro pro uh, project manager, can't talk today, uh, <laughs> mostly over on Girls Run These Worlds, and today I'll be playing Jessica Jones, your friendly local, very salty, very sassy uh, New York City uh, resident, uh, because I, I miss living in New York City. Incredible. Um, I also didn't check to see if anybody had actually lived in, in New York before, I think you might not be alone on that, but if I reference stuff that's like completely incorrect it's because we're in a i will let you world. be incorrect it's okay thank you i appreciate <laughs> that very much uh next up nick hey everyone uh my name is nick i will be playing my pronouns are, are he they uh i will be playing the blind lawyer of hell's kitchen matt murdoch aka daredevil and uh uh by day when I'm not doing this, uh, I am a writer and an author. Um, I'm, uh, I'm also a film critic. You can find my work over at filmsnobbery.com. Uh, Fantastic. Back to, back to you, Derek. Thank you. Um, it's like you've done this before. Not necessarily this, but interviews before. I've, I've listened to a lot of them. They're great. Highly Thank recommend you. checking out Next Step. Um, Taylor will not be joining us this week, but will be joining us next week, which kind of makes sense since uh, she's playing a multiversal Spider-Verse character. Uh, so uh, Taylor will be joining us as Spider-Bite come next week. Uh, but next up then uh, is Cap. I, I mean, that's that's kind of what you go by in real life, but Mike, uh, all you. Kind of is. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike. Uh, I can be found all over the internet as Canadian Captain America uh, or CDN Captain America, depending on which app and which platform you use, uh, featuring most of my cosplay stuff or my scathing DNT commentary. Uh, tonight, or today, uh, and for the rest of this uh, fantastic little event, I am going to be playing everyone's favorite Star Spangled Avenger, Captain America. 
my my personal favorite Avenger, to be fair. So <laughs> it, it took a lot to not wear the Captain America shirt this week. I'll have to strategically plan when I'm going to do that. Um, we already have uh, an, an auto failure. So thank you to uh, to Mitch for the donation for that. Uh, always much appreciated. Your money's going towards uh, two great causes, both this story and also uh, the a wonderful cause with PCRF. Uh, last but absolutely not least, uh, Aaron. Hello, I'm Erin. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, I uh, am a game designer, uh, layout designer, uh, and performer. And outside of this, I also work in the escape room industry. Um, I will be playing uh, my favorite X-Man, uh, the swashbuckling Nightcrawler. Fantastic. Also, my favorite X Man. Maybe, maybe like like close second is Colossus, but yeah, no, Nightcrawler is definitely up there. Um, fantastic. Thank you again to this wonderful group for joining me. Uh, thank you again to to you all in advance for donations and to the donations that have already happened. Let's go ahead and uh, let's let's jump into this. So, New York City center almost nearly of the marvel multiverse the place where most superheroes seem to congregate uh and also a location of many of the main landmarks of the marvel multiverse we have the daily bugle we have avengers tower there's uh, dr strange's sanctum centaurum there's uh the fantastic four's baxter building and there's also weirdly not where i would have put it but a major supervillain prison just off the coast, a separate island from Rikers, uh, is the supervillain prison, The Raft, a place where some of New York's and even the multiverse's worst are contained and held just off the shores of the, the tri-state area. And it's on this otherwise normal day that chaos ensues. The raft is struck by a massive blast of energy, which takes down even its backup, backup, backup generator. The the several layers of, of containment all fail simultaneously. And in moments, the New York, Manhattan, the greater area is overwhelmed by supervillains, convicts. Rikers is also broken into, broken out of, uh, in the ensuing chaos. So not only do we have supervillains, we have convicts all just swarming, trying to escape, trying to find their way either to uh, some sort of access to, to power or wealth or or find their way to, to some sort of safety or shelter. And and as these waves and waves of, of supervillainy and, and convicts are trying to escape, Heroes are called in from all over the, the greater New York area. We, of course, have those like Daredevil and Jessica Jones who might have found themselves on the city streets already. Already, Maybe some Avengers might have already been at the mansion. Uh, the Fantastic Four uh, found themselves on the outskirts returning from another mission. But we have heavy hitters like Thor and Hulk also on the outskirts of the city just trying to contain some of the other heavy hitters who might have been contained at the raft. You all find yourselves on the city streets, broken apart perhaps from your your main teams, as we do have an X-Man, a couple of the uh, solo artists, I'll, I'll consider you, um, and an Avenger, um, all kind of like congregating together. At a certain point when you look around, uh, heroes tend to bond together with heroes, especially when it comes to being overwhelmed by villains. Uh, so you all find yourselves in uh, Lower Manhattan, uh, the, the city streets have quickly devolved. It is hours after the raft has been struck and there are overturned cars and sirens blaring everywhere and, you know, fires in the street and just, just panic all around. And yet hope seems to center with all of you as you have congregated together to take down, you know, orange clad convicts and low tier supervillains. Uh, and it is at this point, as it is getting to be almost evening, that an extra layer of chaos is provided. Sirens seem to almost be blotted out, the, the sound of them deafened out by this warring from above, this, this surge of energy. 
and popping out of portals is is really the, the best way to describe it almost teleporting in above the sky you see several latvarian sky ships warships and swarming from them are legions and legions of doom bots in moments all around you the the added chaos of these doom bots you see that there are latvarian banners with the the masked face of doom uh start being unraveled atop skyscrapers and uh, you can hear the metallic marching and, and you see green blasts of energy. And all while you are taking in this, this moment of chaos, a bubble is created of energy that fully encapsulates Manhattan, cutting it off even to the waterline from everything else. You find yourselves now trapped in Manhattan on this island, an island which as the announcement it can be heard from seemingly everywhere this announcement which seems to emanate from the energy bubble itself manhattan has been annexed by the sovereign state of latveria you are now on latvarian territory you are on latvarian land you are all now latvarian citizens welcome and be be grateful for the lordship of lord doom that is where we find you all a lot's happened. Maybe you're a, you're a little roughed up, not necessarily in a in a mechanical sense, but it's it's been a long day already, and it's seeming like it's not going to, uh, you know, get any shorter at this point. What is what would you all like to do in this moment? Anything that might be going through your minds, anything that you might like to to do, just kind of like as this bubble comes down, as that announcement is is let out. Um, you don't you're not in active combat right now. It's kind of like you're you know center of the street, overturned cars everywhere, fire and all that. What's uh, what would you like to do? I, I turn to uh, Jessica Jones and I said, Jones, he's ta Doom is taking diplomatic immunity way too far. Let me respond to this. And I would like to turn and um, is there any sort of source to this uh, voice that I can hear or is it kind of all encompassing, no, re no real source? Kind of like all encompassing. Like you might see a couple of doom bots like far far above near the energy, uh, like the dome of the energy bubble, just kind of flying, just scanning things. But you don't necessarily see any voice. It's kind of like emanated from the energy bubble itself, so that everyone could hear it. Fantastic. I will go ahead and flip off the nearest doom bot and then turn back, uh, and then turn back to you. There is diplomatic imm immunity for you. It's been revoked. <laughs> Fantastic. So I'm going to look for a, a way to maybe get a vantage point. Is there a uh, is, is there a nearby maybe a fire escape or something that I could billy club up to swing the line up to? For sure. Yeah, I have to imagine. You know, you're you're kind of Lower Manhattan. You're you're just outside of the um, the financial district, so mm -hmm. there are some taller buildings here. Uh, absolutely, some something that you'd be able to do. Um, go ahead and let's let's have our first roll here. Um, I'm not. I'm, I will hold on to my my fantastic failures for uh, when they might be uh, oh. more apt. This, this doesn't seem like a fun place to use it, but um, yeah, go ahead and uh, let's do our first roll. Uh, All right. So again, uh, Marvel uses a six one six dice system. Uh, if you're familiar with Marvel, that's the main universe. So it's three d sixes, uh, a six, a one on your Marvel die, and a six is a fantastic success. Okay, here we go. Your, uh, no pressure. Card. First roll. No pressure, first roll. All right, so we are gonna have a, uh, let's see, 9, 10, 11, 12 on the dies. Okay, um, a, a 12 on the die. What is your, uh, what's your modifier for, um, I believe it's your agility. Agility, right? Yeah. Uh, that is going to be a plus, uh, for, it would be a non-combat check, right? Yes, it is a non-combat yeah. So plus three. Fantastic, okay. Uh, that does succeed, and you are able to billy club your way up to a, a fire escape uh, one of the higher tiers as well and kind of get this um, uh, closer to a bird's eye view mm -hmm. of the streets uh, before you so you have you know several T-junctions mm -hmm. and uh, you can kind of see down the street and you can see that now everything has this green hue to it as the the green energy bubble kind of is like illuminating everything and what is otherwise becoming uh, a night sky above that and um, you can see that there are 
uh, around the bubble itself. Um, you can see that there are a, a couple of impact points where, you know, you can't necessarily tell from, you know, from the sound of it, but it sounds like somebody is trying to break through, but the energy bubble is not really, like, having any give, but you can hear a couple of impact points here and there. Um, you might chalk up to maybe, a, you know, Nordic hammer slamming into them, or perhaps a, a helicarrier firing at them. Um, let's do uh, let's do something. Let's do like an observation check. Um, what would that necessarily be? So that's your that vigilance. vigilance. Mm -hmm. Let's do a vigilance roll. Would that be for me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're you're kind of like yep. as you're scouting a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm also trying to. I'm going to try to hone in that like echolocation sense to kind for of sure. see what. Uh, you know, what's going on uh th this one might not be as high but let's see so we have a eight plus uh vigilance right yes uh eight plus three so that's going to be 12 okay. uh, no 11 no 11 11 eight plus three yeah 11 um okay uh also i should note because again marvel loves its um it's Easter eggs. All of the abilities spell out Marvel. It's like melee agility, resilience, vigilance, ego, and and uh, what's the logic. One? Logic. Logic. Yeah. Um, okay. So what you pick up as you are kind of echolocating, you know, picking up the the vibrations, the sounds all about the city. Uh, again, sirens are are really a thing. You can tell that there is police activity, even National Guard activity. Uh, in numerous parts around the city they're trying to contain. However, also in those areas, it seems like you're also picking up a lot of explosions, a lot of crunching metal. Uh, it seems like the sirens might be drawing in some supervillains as well. Um, so you'll you'll hear sirens and then the sirens will stop with, you know, kind of uh, the sound of something being smashed together. Uh, you're picking up a lot of panic all about you know a lot of voices that are screaming yelling you know a lot of fear in the city um you are also picking up uh, a lot of what sounds like energy blasts uh that are coming from further north uh, in manhattan so uh more uptown uh that seems to be where a lot of the doom bots seem to be congregating and i think that's that's probably what you get from where you are right now ruby uh, I'm I'm going to uh, kind of um, head back down to street level to kind of relay that to the rest of the team, since okay. as far as I know we don't have like communication devices or anything between each other. That's actually something I was I was going to offer. Um, so, what kind of communication devices do you think that you all would have on you? Um, cell phones. It, it, it could, yeah, yeah, it could be it could be cell phones. Cap could have uh, an Avengers communication device. But standard I wanna, issue. Wanna, yeah, standard mm -hmm. issue. want to kind of leave it up to, to you all <clears> as <throat> to what you think you might have. I think um, at least I wouldn't have, like Jessica wouldn't have anything necessarily team-based on her own. Mm -hmm. If someone were to walk up and say, hey, let's keep in communication, take this, I think she'd be okay with grabbing it. Um, but the default for her is going to be cell phone. Right. Um, uh, uh, I think that Nightcrawler again may have uh, something just like a regular cell phone but famously the X-Men have a ton of telepaths so that's not really been uh, an, an issue is having communicators yeah that's right and I guess sometimes when they do it's they like they press the X and they can talk yeah. to each other through that but yeah um we could say you, you you might have both just in case. Okay. Yeah. Um, my suggestion enough. my suggestion would be I probably have uh, whether it's an in in helmet kind of uh, communication device or uh, you know having been um, tried to have been recruited to the Avengers multiple times I do have one of those Avengers ID cards that does have a built in communicator into it if I'm going to get super geeky about it. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, um, okay, so. What I will say then is um, we're going to get two rolls here. Um, well, actually, I'm not even sure if I want to make these rolls. We will have, we'll have two points of communication here because I think there's, there's two outside forces who might be trying to communicate in. So, Cap, you 
get on your your Avengers communication device. Uh, is this like a like Stark Tech wrist thing? Is it a like a you know S Star Trek kind of like communications device? Like what do you what do you imagine this looks like? <clears throat> he's got the two, as as Nick said. Uh, he's got the standard issue Avengers identification card, which has a built-in communicator to it uh, that responds with uh, biometric scan. Uh, and he has uh, the standard, I guess, a uh, communications earpiece that will connect um, himself to, I guess, a regular route. But then again, if it's Stark Tech, then we're talking, you know, we're going to have connections to the police and uh, emergency services and gotcha. standard okay. uh, emergency level protocol. So, Cap, you are going to get a very crackly call on your Avengers communication device uh, that's going to come through. And again, Daredevil, if you have one of these as well, it's going to come through from Tony. It's going to, it's going to come through from Iron Man. Uh, it's kind of like an APB sort of message where it's uh, any heroes who still might be in the city at any communication at all. Can, 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 can you can you hear? And, it, and it's it's very crackly, but you 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 can tell it's Iron Man trying to get through. Tony, Tony, repeat, say again, over, all after incinerators. So, Cap, is that? Are you in there? Yeah, we're we're in here. All right, I'm trying to adjust, but this is it's really hard getting through. Whatever this energy is. I trying to adjust, get to Avengers Tower, have fun playing Frisbee golf. Thanks, Tony. You're helpful. Uh, I'm going to recoin her with anybody I can find. Um, Nightcrawler, you'll get a message um, from Charles Xavier. Kurt, I'm detecting you inside of the city on your well. Uh, yes, uh, everything is fine in here. Well, except for everything going wrong. Yes, I'm sensing quite a lot of peril inside of the city. Are uh, any of the other X-Men with you? None that I have seen. It seems there's some sort of strange energy bubble that's been created by the Latvarian army. We're doing our best out here. I have both blue and gold teams uh, designated in different locations. I had no idea that you had been separated. Um, are you able to teleport out? I have not tried. Uh, uh, are you alone? No. Uh, I am with uh, a few others. Do what you can to get to safety. Just take care of yourself and those you're with. If you need anything at all, I will do my best to contact you, but this has been quite a strain. I've had to use Cerebro just to contact you through this way. This is... Doom is using some sort of strange combination of magic and technology, as he is one to do, and this is terribly difficult for me. All right, Professor. I I will try uh, to teleport out, and if not, uh, I'll make things work in here. I'll be with you. And very important hey? question: Is this happening within? Like, is this happening within <laughs> earshot? I think so. I think I. I also think. Uh, he, uh, I think I'm I'm talking out loud, yeah. <laughs> because I okay. think the second that I hear the I'm gonna try and teleport out, Jessica turns and goes, "You better fucking not." <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's any consolation, if it's any consolation, it's I don't think it will work. Great, great. Can, can I try? Can uh, you <laughs> Yeah, uh, you, you absolutely you can absolutely try. Um, 
So you're you're in central, kind of like the the, the center of Lower Manhattan right now. Um, I know that teleporting like more than a mile is sometimes a stretch for, for Kurt. Uh, so what you can do is, I mean, you can absolutely just bamf your way to the edge and see if if you can kind of like get through that barrier. Um, what that would be is, uh, let's call that. I'm trying to remember what your what your power is necessarily connected to. Uh, my my uh, mechanically, I can just out of combat teleport three hundred spaces. Three, okay, so that is. We're going by classic rules. It's about eighteen hundred feet. Yeah, it's about yeah, because I think in this it's like a it's a five foot box, about which is like a third of a mile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so that would definitely be a stretch then. So we'd we'd want to make this a roll uh, because this is going to be this will be pretty tough. So um, I believe this is going to be an ego roll. Actually, you know what? I want to make this a resilience roll because this is like you stretching your like natural mutant ability to to teleport. I mean, almost three times your your normal uh, ability to, to kind of get out of this and then also get through whatever this combination of magic technology is so this is going to be a this is an absurd um this is an absurd resilience roll <laughs> okay you got this no i don't <laughs> i mean we have an automatic success we do we do Ooh. <laughs> if you if you really want to fuck off, you absolutely can. I I think it's more interesting to stay in here. Um, We're going to subvert and... the plot point. <laughs> uh, no way. That would be a ten. Mm. Okay. Um. So, Kurt, you you know you hear what Jessica has to say. Maybe a little bit of Catholic guilt uh, has been uh, burdened onto your shoulders, and yet you you bamf your way down the street. Uh, until you get to the, you know, the, I'm going to say East River and maybe be right. I don't know. Um, but you will, you will get your way to, to the waterline, essentially trying to get to New Jersey. Um, you can see that the, like, the, the bubble is in the middle of the water. It's almost like the, the state line between New York and New Jersey. If, if you had to imagine, it's cut the Lincoln Tunnel in half. Um, and yet... You know, you can see the, whatever bridge that is, the Holland, oh, that's also the Holland Tunnel. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see the, the water Like the Verrazano running. or the... What's that? Well, no, Verrazano would be going over to the, the Jeep George Washington. No, that's, okay, anyway, sorry. Yeah, see, I, I went to, I, last time I was there was my senior year of high school, and that was a minute ago. Um, <laughs> so this is the Hudson. So you can see the Hudson in front of you. Um, you really try to like tense up you know teleport you you pass into that infernal realm that that nightcrawler kind of like just blinks through and as you come out on the other side you just splash into the the hudson and now you are um i think as spider-man describes in one of the many uh games where he swings around um you could wash and wash and never be clean again <laughs> Uh, so you you have become a soggy blue elf, um, and yet you should you like be able to bamf your way back to um, to the mainland. Yes, uh, okay. I think that knowing I can get through, I will bamf back and and try and get back to uh, to to New York. Okay, right. Um, you don't take any damage. Although you can definitely like you're starting even in the water here to feel like some sort of crackling energy like as you got closer to the barrier, you can definitely tell that it is not just something solid that there is a, a level of uh, perhaps uh, danger in coming into contact with uh, with the barrier. And yes, you find yourself back uh, on the street with well, Daredevil still might be scouting above, but with uh, Jessica and Cap. Well, I have good news, and I have bad news. Is the good news that you're stuck with us? No, actually. Uh, I can, I can get out. The, which is the, that is the good news. 
Uh, the bad news is that I landed in the river. Great. So, just about eight million more people to go for teleporting out, uh, as long as they can all swim. I Better start now. Over, put over the, uh, the, the the communication link. You know, um, I. I, did someone did someone bring Staten Island over here? Because it something smells like garbage. What is? It's like that. That's just me. Not, okay. There goes half of our viewers. Yes, yes. Our viewers Everyone make now. fun oh, of God. Nightcrawler. <laughs> we will do it your way. Yeah, it's rough when your teleportations also smell like fart. Like it's <laughs> it's no fun. All all of that brimstone. Fire and brimstone, not just brimstone. Fire and brimstone, yeah. Um, Burning fires. Can I do a quick little hop up with my hashtag flight powers um, and try and identify if there is a higher concentration or a or a gravitation of these doom bots um, anywhere in the city that I can see? For sure. So yeah, flying gets you a little bit higher than even where where Daredevil would be able to reach. Um, so. No necessarily roll for that. Let's go ahead and make a roll for vigilance. Let's do it. Click mm -hmm. clack math rocks. I love the click clack math rocks. If I can find the right window. There they are. Okay, cool. Please hold. Okay, okay. 12, 13, 14. Uh, sorry, 15. 15. Perfect. Um, exactly what you needed. Uh, this was going to be a difficult roll. So uh, because you all are essentially mostly tier three. Oh, hold up. Um, it, yeah. it, it, ma it matters that it was that, that it was a one on the Marvel die, right? Uh, yes, that does count as um, so what, what, was, what was your what was your die roll? Into? It was six one one. Six one one. OK, so, so basically six six one. Six six one. Yes, yeah. but not a six one six. Right. No. What, yes. Well, yeah, it was a six one one. Right. <laughs> yes. On your Marvel die, uh, you cannot roll a one. Uh, the one counts as a six. The only time it counts is one is when it's critically a six. It's yeah. It's a whole weird system. It's a whole thing. So, uh, but still, um, totally successful. Uh, so kind of like scanning out, taking, uh, you know, a, a bit more height into the sky. Um, uh, you can, you can kind of scan about and you can see that a lot of the doom bots seem to be congregating around central park. And that is where you can also see that there is a uh, almost like a dip, like a, a divot in the the bubble itself. It seems like that might be the center where the the energy is concentrating from, and the bubble is being generated from is all around is somewhere in Central Park. Um, so yeah, there's almost like you know this this curvature to uh to the bubble it seems to be starting there a lot of the doom bots seem to be congregating around there you see a couple that are scouting about um and actually as you have have taken to the sky uh a couple of them i'm going to have you uh make a roll here um we call this let's call this agility to see as as doom bots are like scanning to see if you can duck out of the way as they are going to notice you what could possibly go wrong Uh, let's see. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, one Marvel 3, which makes it an 11 plus 2 is a 13. Okay. Um, you are, as you, you're scanning around, you can see that there's a couple of... Or sorry, 12. Explosions. My bad. Math. 12. Okay. I, I know. It's This one has a little bit more math than yeah. some of those might be used to. 12, um, with, 12 with an M. Cool. Um, yeah, when we get into uh, combat, there's multiplication as well. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, you can see a couple of explosions as well. You can see Doombots. You can also, as you're scanning around, you see a lot of like uh, small swarms of orange-clad individuals. You can see convicts kind of running about. Um, nobody necessarily near you. It seems like they're they're all concentrating towards Central and Upper Manhattan. Um, but as you notice, the, the doom bots that are about to notice you, you know, these green lights that are emanating out almost like, you know, laser scanners that are just, uh, scanning over all of the buildings, all of the populace, these, uh, metal clad automatons, which have the, the mask of doom over their faces. Um, the scanner is just about to scan over you and you are able to duck behind, uh, the building where Daredevil has also, 
uh, is just kind of like standing on the fire escape and you're able to kind of, you know, in your otherwise dark clothing as, as night is kind of falling, uh, get into the shadows and they are not able to, to scan over you. Fantastic. Then I will make my way back down to the ground. Nice and nice and easy. Can I get um, your ride? Absolutely. I will swing by. <laughs> I will swing by and, and grab my friend. Friend. Um, <laughs> I have allies, not friends. Um, <laughs> well, I have one friend and I actually don't know where she is if she's running around on the ground somewhere because the raft is broken. Anyway. Um, um, swing back down. So... We're going to Central Park. Carriage it seems ride? Like that's where Was there from. any reason for that or follow up or anything? It seems like the bubble is originating from Central Park. They're they're all congregating there. They the concentration seems to be there. Um, and I am going to find a slightly more accurate description than just Central Park. I'll probably try and be like the field or the, the or like this this pond because Central Park is really fucking big. Right. Um so I will try and like like give everyone a somewhat more uh a somewhat more uh pinpointed like northern or or middle or southern. Um Yeah, I'm not I think if, if we were going to uh designate it to a certain point, um it was kind of hard to tell. It's almost like there wasn't just a single point that everything was emanating from. It was kind of almost like there were four points. Um almost the, the four points of Central Park itself. Oh, that this energy might have been kind of uh, threading upwards and, and into the bubble. Um, and that is also, I should do a long hike from uh, Lower Manhattan to Central Park on foot, even when you can teleport and fly. Um, what I'll offer is, is this, since you all are part of the, the Marvel Universe, um, this is going to be a kind of game where, you know, you're going to be kind of getting to to that point and there's going to be encounters along the way um you will have safe house opportunities as they are provided uh from the marvel multiverse itself so you will have the baxter building uh the avengers mansion uh which i believe at this point does include the sanctum sanctorum um I wouldn't consider the the Daily Bugle to be a safe house by any means, but uh, should you have anything else like you know Daredevil, only for Spider Man, yeah. oh, only for Spider Man, yeah. yeah. Um, the rest of us are fine. The, you know, <laughs> the law offices of Nelson and Murdoch. Right. Yeah. If, well. Yeah. Daredevil absolutely probably has like a safe house as well. Jessica Jones as well. So yeah, as, really as those might, apartment. Might, <laughs> right. As those come up, you you would absolutely be able to uh, to utilize those because we're not going to have as much of like, uh, oh, fight, then rest, fight, then rest kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, you do know at this point that you have uh, Central Park where the energy states be congregating. You also have um, the direction from Tony to go to Avengers Tower. Uh, so with those two points and with the villains about, what would you all like to do? So we are all together. You are yep. all together at this okay. point. Everybody has flown down back on the city street. Uh, Kurt is drying off. <laughs> You're all together. Short of getting everybody out one teleport at a time, I don't think you've got the uh, stamina for that. Uh, we've got two points of Avengers? contact. Where are the Avengers? Why aren't they coming? They are not here. Uh, you're looking at them until we can get to Avengers Tower and find out uh, what kind of roster we're looking at. They are yes. likely on the streets. Uh, I haven't heard from anyone other than Tony. And he's not inside. Do you think we should hit the tower first and then uh, see where we're at from there? Are we... We're in Lower Manhattan? Yes. Yeah. We'd uh, be going past Central Park in order to get to the tower. Correct. So yes, we can I swing by the Central Park and see this bunt cake of uh, energy power, <laughs> if you want, uh, and find screen. out I mean, just exactly well. what. <laughs> it is a bunt cake of energy. Thank, thank you, Mike. Uh, yes, I'm referencing my, my Marvel Universe map by map book uh, that Fantastic. I got from my birthday last year. So. Nice, nice. Very nice. And Thanks. on the bright Thanks, side, Mike. if we collect a whole following of Doombots, we're headed to Avengers Tower. Well, if there is anything the X-Men are good at it is fighting robots. <laughs> okay. To Avengers Tower via Central Park then. Alright. Oh. 
Um, so what I'll ask then is, are you, you know, uh, marching through the streets? Are we going to be flying, teleporting? Are you moving stealthily is kind of what I'm getting at with all this. Uh, but what is your, your means of, of, uh, transportation? Are you hot wiring a car? You know, that kind of stuff. I think we should hot wire two motorcycles actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, how, how quietly would you all like to move to see? You could also, I guess, move through, uh, you know, the tunnel system, the tube system. As much as I think that, uh, taking things head on would be a fantastic, uh, workout for the day. I think discretion until yeah. we have no other choice. The ACE line will, will spit us out, um, right at the corner of Central Park. Yep. All right. Everyone got their subway tokens? Nope. All right, pop in the turnstiles it is. I'll hit the church later for confession. We'll, we're good. Let's go. The city owes me. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you all find uh, access to the subway tunnels, which uh, are near abandoned at this point. I, don't, I think, you know, any New Yorker worth their salt that lives in the Marvel multiverse knows not to be underground uh, during a supervillain attack. That's just, that's a good way to get crushed by something. Uh, so you uh, you head down there and it is just an absolute ghost town. Um, you can see that even at this point there are some signs of uh, super villain incursion down here as the subway train has uh, near cult like compiled just collapsed like a tin can just smashed into too small of a hole into the the south tunnel so there's no heading south here as it's just been completely compressed in uh but the north tunnel is seemingly empty and dark um so go let's go ahead and let's do um one quick thing if i may please yes uh while we uh we're running through running through the gates leaping through the turnstiles i flick four tokens Okay, perfect. into yeah. the into the little drum that collects them uh on the way through it's sort of as we're like sort of doing the, the pommel jump over the turns house uh i love that uh please please enjoy a karma point uh for that that's that's very captain america and actually aaron i'll offer a uh, karma point for the accent because that is uh this is a fantastic german accent um okay let's uh let's do two rolls here so let's do I really need to figure out what stealth is. It, Mike, would you consider stealth agility? I would. Yeah. Uh, let's let's do a group stealth roll. Oh boy. So uh, everything's just going to get totaled and averaged together, which is how I do it in D and D. That's how I'll do it for this. Hooray! Y'all. And it's non combat. Yes, it's me non combat. We're just we're just. Y'all, I, I swear to God, six one six. Okay. Ooh. Fantastic. We um, got our first. A fantastic success. Uh, so Jen, I know these subways. I will, I will get um, your your extra thing from you here momentarily once we we get everybody else's, um, because you could determine then if you want to like you know, tell Cap to shut up or you know if you want to use your your fantastic success to to help somebody else who particularly failed. So um, wow. that that's great though that that's ideal. So um, what about Daredevil, Nightcrawler, and Cap? Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Also thirteen. Okay. I, I rolled pretty low. 15. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, for so... me. <laughs> it's practically a failure. And if you want the total, it's a 20. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Um, successful all across. Um, so, Jen, uh, Jessica, uh, I will kind of open this to you a little bit. Is there something helpful that you think you would find down here in the subway system um this could be you know weapon armor hint clue um you know it could be something you know particularly beneficial happens like the the subway train just pulls right up and you know the ghost rider pulls up on his motorcycle is like get on you know and, and like what's uh what, what's something you would you would think you would like to happen for your fantastic success I think, and I don't know how realistic this is because I haven't really done much with track maintenance before. I think we run into track maintenance, um, like an abandoned track maintenance, um, like setup, and we find one of those little go karts. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're able to hop on and speed things up a little bit just by like newman through the tunnels. Okay. Uh, I love that. Um, 
Oh. And I think I think it would be great if we could just like you know pick up a heavy rock or two, but heavy so. yeah, heavy rocks everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You can you can stuff your pockets with heavy rocks. Cap's got uh, his shield, but you know, I normally operate with uh with, with my fists. Right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yes, you would absolutely be able to find uh, the the maintenance track and uh, and uh, the cart instead. Uh, that gets you out of you know kind of like ducking into that door, finding that it's it's unlocked, um, or maybe like the key was left in it. You take the key with you, lock it behind. You now have kind of an isolated pathway that separates you out from anything else that might otherwise have been in that tunnel. That's fine. I'll save them for later. Uh, you continue moving uptown and from what you can hear there's a lot of a lot of noise from above you know again a lot of silence and then you'll hear what sounds like the footsteps of a giant uh you know with like dust coming down from the ceiling even from from how far deep you all are um you'll hear you know some smashing some even sirens kind of echoing down from time to time uh but you continue moving pretty successfully uh, all the way until you can, you're pretty sure, you know, judging from the, the access tunnels uh, labeling that you are just about a, a half block away from uh, Avengers Mansion, Avengers Tower. And no other issues. You you all move stealthily. You had a fantastic success. Um, again, this place is near abandoned. There's nobody else down here. And you found some big rocks. And we're all bundled up in a clown car. Yes, yes, absolutely. That was the most important part of the fantastic success. That was the most important part of it, the clown car. Well, we've had more glamorous transportation, but I can't deny it's effective. It is meant for zipping through the tunnels. It beats the fantastic car. I have no Reed, Reed Richards has an aneurysm <laughs> some, some many miles away. <laughs> Ow, I got burned. How did I get burned? Johnny. <laughs> um, um, are we continuing upwards then? Onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards, great. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and as you all are getting out onto the city street, uh, let's do a vigilance roll. Ooh. Ten. Uh, Four, 14. That is a one Marvel one. Uh, <laughs> also, a fantastic failure. Okay. Fantastic eight. Yeah. Double okay. what's, Daredevil has a lot of vigilance, though, doesn't he? No, uh, plus three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we, we've got a, a couple of things here. So, um, I Cap, tripped over I, one of your big rocks. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Cap, you know, you you've got the highest vigilance roll, it sounds yeah. like, and I think with your your battle readiness, you know, getting close to the tower, you're you're familiar with kind of the sounds of things to to really note and and the sights to to kind of note, and so I, I think it's it's maybe you know the the first time you, you do a ladies first kind of thing, so Jessica takes first step out onto the the city street. And just like there's spotlights that you didn't necessarily predict. So Jessica kind of covers her eyes a little bit, is a little bit, you know, not necessarily blinded, but you, you don't necessarily see them at first. Daredevil kind of like maybe scoffing a little bit, like, <laughs> well, that, that sucks. It doesn't happen to me. Um, you end up walking right into the middle of, right as Cap might shout out, like, wait you find yourself surrounded by aim agents all armed all attempting to shoot down the front door of the avengers tower which has its its defenses kind of firing back at them we're going to go ahead and roll for initiative Ooh. as um i'm going to say daredevil i will actually give you the the fantastic thing to your your failure here is i will give you uh, the drop on these aim agents who didn't expect Daredevil to just walk up next to them. Um, so you will have a bonus round to to get something off on them. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and roll for initiative here as you can see there are four aim agents still standing, all armed, all ready to go. 18. Interesting. 
I am noting in the demiplane uh, character sheet that I don't necessarily see an initiative uh, tab or button oh. to roll. So it's straight initiative, uh, vigilance then, right? Yeah, let me... Uh... Very interesting. Yeah, and you may have to explain uh, initiative to me a little bit. Sorry. For sure. No worries. No, hey, that's, yeah. that's for, for the folks at home. Oh, there it is. I found it. Not for me, but for the folks at home. For the folks. <laughs> How does initiative work? Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, initiative is also rolled with uh, your your six one six die. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cap, your initiative modifier is three e. No, I did find the tab actually. It's up in it. up in okay. the speed top corner. Yes. And I have uh, an E, so I'm going to re-roll my marble die. Yes, because you have three fish. On I also have the E. Yes. So you will have you have edge. So you can re-roll your lowest die. So uh you roll your, your six one six die and you will add your initiative modifier, which typically correlates to r- roughly to your uh agility. Uh it's not necessarily a one to one, but uh yeah. So, for example, an aim agent will have a uh, six one six die, and oh, that was almost a six one six. That was a six six one. Uh, so plus one, so a fourteen for aim agents. And I'm sorry, Jessica. What did you say your uh, initiative was? Ah, oh, it's a ten. Okay. Uh, Nightcrawler, what was yours? 18. And Daredevil? 15. And Cap? Uh, 15 as well. Okay. Uh, do you all have a preference as to who goes first, or does somebody have a higher agility roll? Or higher agility uh, modifier, rather? Uh, I'll throw it to Cap. I have an agility of four. Yeah, you'd get it anyway. Mine's five, uh, 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 three. Cool. All I right. I find that weird. You should right? be way higher than that. Yeah, the numbers don't always, like I said, Quicksilver and Spider-Man having the same agility. I, I know there's extra stuff to make Quicksilver fast, but yeah. Anyway, mm. um, Nightcrawler, you were up first. Uh, so you, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, Daredevil, you were up first because you have the uh, surprise round. So, uh, with your, your bonus round, you have four aim agents. You can kind of think of them, um, you know, like two on the left, two on the right. There's a couple of aim vehicles here as well that they have ducked behind as the Avengers turrets are, are still kind of like trying to track them and fire at them. Uh, you would know that they would rec- like they have facial recognition. They're not going to shoot at you. Um, mm-hmm. And you can see that, yeah, AIM has pulled up in some of their, their unmarked vans. They have some very fancy high-tech looking uh, weapons. And these are the otherwise like yellow clad, flat helmeted with the, the kind of face guard sort of full yellow outfits. They're, they're trying to steal tech, st- uh, Stark tech as they often are. And uh, during the chaos, they've been trying to take advantage of it. So um, with that, what would you like to do? Uh, would, would we say that we're, we kind of came up like pretty close to them like they're fairly close by oh yeah these the, these guys would be within like fight like you you walked right into the middle of them okay like they they were kind of like talking to each other when you just kind of walked up and found yourself in the middle of them i'm just gonna kind of uh uh look at one of them i'm kind of standing next to him at this point because we kind of just are there it's like have you tried knocking and i'm going to use chain strikes okay uh, you stole my quip <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I take it back. Take two. All right. Same energy this no, time. No, no. Shirts no, I... off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to use chain strikes. Go for it. Okay. Great. Let's do this. All right. And, all right. So now. Uh, this would be a melee strike, I'm assuming, right? Yes. Okay. And so that's going to be three, six, nine plus four is thirteen. Uh, thirteen, I believe. Let's see. You. Here's where I'm trying to learn all the sheets. So, just be 
Uh, 13 does beat their defense score of 12. So Fan- that does hit. Fantastic. So that is going to uh, then be three times three, because that's the damage modifier on the melee attack. Mm -hmm. So that's nine plus four. So that's another 13. Uh, So that's 13 points of damage to... um... Oh, and you know what? I actually, I can make that that, uh, close attack with an edge. Yeah, go for it. All right. Yeah, it only made it a little bit higher. It just made it one one higher. Okay. So, uh, so the damage then would be uh, instead of thirteen, it'd be fourteen. Perfect. Uh, yes, these guys only have ten health. Uh, so you are using your your billy club. Uh, mm-hmm. Just plop one of them right in the right in the temple through the the mesh the, and the the helmet, whatever it is. They're not the that, bucket uh, head. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, that's a great description. Um, and just goes flying backwards kind of like into the the van the van kind of rocks a little bit from the shock of this uh this person flying back into it and uh the the rest of them level their weapons at you uh but it is not yet their turn as a nightcrawler it is your turn all right uh nightcrawler is going to blink behind two of them and say have you tried knocking ah (laughs) shaisa And then just try to uh, take two of their heads and just bang them together. That is uh, is literally an ability. It um, is literally an ability. Please tell me you're using banging heads. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. All right. Uh, go for um, it. So that is a, a melee check. Yes. And that is, uh, let's see, addition is... <laughs> That is a 17. 17 will do it. Okay. And so uh, the, uh, okay. So six times three is 18 plus uh, two is 20. Okay. So yeah, it, it deals uh, 20, uh, it deals uh, 20 to both of them. Okay. Uh, yeah, even if it was split in half, you would you would knock these guys clean out. Uh, they they don't even get a shot off. They fall to the ground as you you find yourself kind of like looking at Daredevil cross away. There's one uh, aim agent left who now um, you can see the panic through the bucket helm as they are looking back and forth with this like gat- energy gatling gun that they have at their hip. Um, however, still not their turn as uh, Cap, it is your turn. I walk up to him. I gra- I take a hold of the handle of the Gatling gun. I look him straight into the little visor. I say, son, just don't. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Um... <laughs> What'd you call that? Logic? That, that, that feels like logic. You're, you're applying logic to a situation of, yeah, let's let's not get in this fight. Uh, go ahead and do in. a uh, logic roll, please. A logic roll? Unless you have any sort of, like, commanding sort of abilities, anything like that, that might go into it. I have, I mean, in terms of the tactics, I have inspiration, I have combat support, but that's not... Uh, I, I think you could inspire him to live another day if you would like to use inspiration for that. Uh, j- sure. Uh, 17. Okay. Six, six, seven, uh, yeah, his, I had a logic roll for him to, to try to combat it. Rolled uh, only a 16 uh, in total. So you uh, you can kind of like see as the, the light, the, the green light catches the visor and you see the very you know, human eyes of just this poor guy on the, the other this side. Of this bead of sweat. <laughs> yeah, the, the single bead of sweat. It's either sweat or a tear. You're not sure. But uh, <laughs> he, he goes, yeah, yeah, I think that's, yes, sir. And just it, yeah, absolutely just drops the weapon at his side and goes running off in a very, like, it, th- those suits were not meant to run in. It's, it's definitely riding up a little bit. Uh, but it just goes running Ooh. off down the street. And uh, the the turret system uh, recognizes all of your faces, and you can see that it deactivates. And uh, as you 
uh, can approach the mansion, should you like. Uh, you know the doors would, would open for you. These reinforced doors, which have a number of, uh, like, scorch marks and blasts on them, but have, have held up pretty nice. So anything y'all would like to do, anything you would like to do with uh, anything that AIM agents might have left behind, uh, anything else you want to do on the street, or are we heading to the mansion? I want to yeah, grab I... a... Go ahead. No, nope, you got it. Um, yeah. Without sounding so crude as to say, I want to loot the bodies, I want to loot the bodies. <laughs> <For> <laughs> because they have good weapons, I want one. Yeah, um, man, to say that AIM agents have good weapons, the... They're better, than, they're better than fists and rocks. Right, that's true. Uh, yeah, you would absolutely be able to find... Um, let me see if I can find the rules for weapons here, because they do have weapon descriptions. Um, while I do that, yes, you would be able to grab uh, essentially the equivalent of, like, a rifle. You know, uh, page these... 34. <laughs> I'm also, uh, I you know, if there's anything there, uh, you know, if... I, if Matt Murdock is, if anything, he's always looking for evidence. Is there, mm -hmm. you know, gonna, I would love to look and see if there's anything on these AIM agents to uh, identify their role within this whole doom thing, or if they're just taking advantage of a situation. Okay. Um, Jessica, uh, actually, let's do, let's do a vigilance roll. Uh, Matt, let's do a vigilance, vigilance roll as well. All right. Ooh, a six, six, four. I'm so we'll glad none that. of you picked Ooh. characters who also have, uh, like, the alter egos with anybody else's normal names, because that would be... I, it's so I much easier. As, as much as I want to call you, like, Nightcrawler, like, Kurt just comes out so much easier. I don't know. It's it's two fewer syllables. Yeah. Um, yeah. 16, 18 for me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, are we considered out of initiative at this point? We are, yes. Cool. Yeah, every, right. Everybody's down, we're out of initiative. I would like to... 17. Okay, sorry. No, you're Go good, ahead, Mike. Uh, I would like to uh, bring, grab the two remaining AIM agents by the scruff, uh, drag them to the wall at the outside before we mm -hmm. go in, sort of just prop them up against the wall, uh, confiscate their weaponry, and bring it inside with us. Fantastic. Yes. Typical cap. There were there were three left. You get all of them. You get their. Just, just leave them lying in the street. <laughs> Typical cat. Awkward. Uh, Jessica, what I will say is that you find uh, car keys to the the two vans. These are just you know your standard uh, like white nondescript box vans. Nice. Uh, there's nothing necessarily fancy about them. Uh, you can see that inside of these vans, um, and Matt, you pick up on this as well. Uh, are a number of scanning devices and it's kind of like they're set up for you know like they're, they're set up like like aim agents would have like they're they're very technologically advanced on the inside uh but it's it's aim technology which means it definitely has a few viruses in it right oh, um, viruses. you would be able as far as weapons go uh jessica you would be able to find uh the equivalent of like a plasma rifle or something that would be pretty close to like a shotgun, but would okay. it more fires like blasts of energy. Um, okay. So either you're getting something with range or you're getting something that like doesn't have right. range, but can also hit two people if they're staying next to each other. Right. Um, I think I go, to, I go to toss the keys at first to Daredevil and, and then I, and then I think better of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, never mind. <laughs> um, as far as evidence that you might find on them, uh, you don't see that there's anything, you don't find anything necessarily like Latvarian on them. They really do kind of seem like they were just taking advantage of the situation. I mean, that this happens a lot. Anytime any type of chaos happens, their AIM agents are often just scavengers. They're trying to get whatever they can under the radar, even though they wear bright yellow, and then just like get out and try to profit from it later. So it really does seem like they were trying to scrounge Stark tech. And you can even see that in the back of a couple of vans, they just have like those, um, like those plastic box baskets that are just full of like loose tech, like little bits of Iron Man armor that have like broken off during certain fights that they've tried to put back together. They have a very like will explode in your hand kind of like plasma cannon that they've, they've taken off of like war machine at one point. Um, but yeah, no, nothing necessarily, uh, useful and nothing necessarily any more nefarious, uh, than that. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, Jones, do you want to leave your card with these guys at all? Do you, do you think that maybe, you know, 
new clients, hey, it's tough out there. Find out who stole all this stuff. And I will shrug and just reach into a pocket, pull out two business cards and tuck them like right into their collars. <laughs> Fantastic. There. If uh, nothing okay. else, we have a van when we get out of here. We have two vans. That's one more than the Punisher has. True. <laughs> we have a Quinjet. Yeah, well, supposedly you have a Hulk, too, <laughs> but where is he? <laughs> also, also, we do have a subway cart. Yes. Yeah, most importantly. This feels very Princess Bride as you all are, are establishing. You know, the, <laughs> have fun the, storming the castle. Yeah, yeah what, why was that not listed amongst our assets? Uh, okay. Just, all right. To Stark uh, Tower we go. Yeah. Should we link arms and skip in? I'm not skipping. It's a good try. I don't skip. Uh, uh, the uh, doors, uh, like you see several layers of, you know, like steel reinforced, titanium reinforced, all of this like Stark tech kind of defenses all come down on the doors. I mean, despite this place, like the city being taken over by Doombots, this place, the Avengers Tower seems relatively safe. You know that there are a lot of defenses put in place here. This kind of can be this, you know, this castle for you all. Um, probably wouldn't withstand everything that the city has to throw at it at this point, but uh, you all are relatively safe in here. Um, and you can essentially consider this a home base. You know that there is uh, hinted healing uh, technology here, uh, just in case you did need uh, some quick healing. Uh, and as you all enter, you can hear the ever-present voice of Jarvis, who I think even at this point in the comics is AI and is no longer just a British man as he originally was. Um, welcome, Avengers. Uh, please make yourselves at home if there's anything at all that you might need. Uh, find refuge and safety here from the encouragement. Not an Avenger. Records indicate that you have membership with the Avengers, Miss Jones. Meh. In name. In practice, maybe. Jarvis, have you heard from Tony? Yes. Uh, in fact, Mr. Rogers, we have a message waiting for you in the, uh, what would you call it? The, the wolf. I nudged Jessica. He called him Mr. Rogers. <laughs> See, Captain yeah, taking off one pair of shoes, putting on a, his inside shoe. <laughs> Puts on a sweater vest. Like, <laughs> but he feels old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yes, to the war room. Okay. Uh, so you head further into the tower, a uh, few floors up where uh, where the war room actually is. Um, Before I do, yes, please. I'm gonna disable the the Gatling guns. Uh, duly noted. Okay. Uh, so uh, once you all are in the war room, it is set up with you know Stark tech, shield tech. Uh, it's it's you know, you've got all of the monitors all about everywhere, and uh, the hol holographs for days. And a 3D uh, image of Iron Man pops up. Uh, hey, old timer. Uh, I figured this was the only way to get a message through to you. Unfortunately, the communication devices seem to be a little haywire. Really trying to figure out to get through the firewall and, well, also energy wall. There's a lot of walls to get through. I don't have to. Ex I don't have time to explain. It's okay. Uh, but communications hopefully will be set up re relatively soon. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Doom's taking over the city. We still have our hands full out here. Hulk, don't eat his head. No. Hulk, Sorry. yes. <laughs> Sorry. I um, think it's a message. <laughs> Whirlwind was, uh, you know, um, apparently looking appetizing at this point, and Hulk hasn't had lunch. Um, anyway, uh, as far as my scans can tell, uh, the energy barrier is being generated uh, at several points around Central Park. Uh -huh. uh, and, and Doombots seem to be everywhere. Uh, we also have indication that uh, Doom has assigned generals 
as he has annexed the city and is creating a sort of uh, war zone. Um, we have information on one of the generals at this time. I'm still trying to, again, get through several walls to get the others. Uh, but it looks like he's assigned Juggernaut as his uh, one of his lead generals. So I recommend tracking him down and uh, hopefully that gets you somewhere. Uh, in the meantime, don't call me. I won't answer. Well, and just cuts off. Uh, Wait, to, oh, right. It's a message. Well, Kurt, That's a problem. At least, you, at least you know how to take, uh, you've taken on Juggernaut a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, the best way is to get his helmet off and then have a telepath to shut him down, which we don't have. Hmm. At least he's easy to spot. Uh, he uh, did always have a habit of working for someone who could give him the most power very quickly. We'll probably find out what Doom promised him. See if we can one-up it. Maybe I will just tell him Charles will be very disappointed in him. Uh, yeah, that, I don't think that would go well. That might make things worse. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll work. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Cap, you know, you you fought in a war or two, and we're going up against generals in a war zone. Uh, I'm open to some thoughts. The only one we know about is Juggernaut. Okay. And uh, no offense to anyone here, but we are not on Juggernaut's power level. So we're going to find a way. We're going to need to find a way to beat him uh, without taking him on head on. Because Hulk is out there, he's in here. Uh, and I just either hold Hulk, up my two or, guns. And either Hulk or Thor are the only ones that I reasonably think would have a reasonable chance of success against Juggernaut in a one-on-one. -on -one. So, uh, we still have no intel on the other three. And hey, Kurt, What are the odds that uh, you could, if you got to hold the Juggernaut, you could teleport him out? Maybe towards where Hulk is. Without and, dying in the process. Yeah, preferably. I mean, you gotta do what preferably? you gotta do, but... Yeah. I mean, one, I don't eight million... Could... Mm. Well, let's put a pin in that. Yeah. Uh, no undue risk, if we can help it. Uh, what is our... What is our roster like in terms of actual personnel here in the tower? Uh, narrator. Uh, yeah, so you you inquire to to Jarvis as uh, Jarvis is omnipresent as you kind of voice that aloud. Um, all of Inja's personnel are currently outside of the city, uh, dealing with the uh, rampant waves of convicts. Uh, you all are, as far as my scan show, the only heroes on the island of Manhattan currently available. What's so, the, civ the civilian population looking like around the tower? around Avengers Tower? Yeah. Um, that's a great question for somebody who doesn't know the population of New York. Um, I'm going to say standard. I'm, I'm going to say, I, I'll tell you why. So okay. my, my here's a here's a plan. Please. Tony won't like it because it's going to ruin his credit rating. Uh, but if we were to lure Juggernaut here and detonate the power source that's located within the tower, would that be enough power to at least detain him for a period of time until we could figure out another solution. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use my comic brain to probably say that if you detonated uh, Avengers Tower, you'd probably in the middle of like yeah. a crater yeah. in in Manhattan. Well, hey, I tried to ask about civilians. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, there's unfortunately the civilians have nowhere to go. Um, and to that point, uh, Jarvis also provides a map of Manhattan that includes the bubble. Uh, indications show that Juggernaut is currently uh, staying at Madison Square Garden and has made that his um, throne. Do we have an indication of civilian uh, civilian concentration across the city? Uh, civilian concentration seems to be more and more uh, towards I the I imagine edges. away from Central Park. Yeah, it's 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 towards the edges where like the people are trying to get out. You can see there's right. concentration around the bridges, around the tunnels where where people are finding that they can't get out. Yeah. And so they're, you know, they're they're congregating at like Battery Park 
and yeah. you know they're trying to head to head north into into Harlem. But and I imagine they, like they're smart enough to try to avoid Avengers Tower in general. Yeah, I again like <laughs> I think any New Yorker worth their salt is not running to Avengers Tower for safety. Like they're not going to the Baxter building. Those are the places that can hit it first. You know, that's the place where Fin Fang Foom or Galactus is gonna land. You don't wanna be there. So so yeah, they, they seem to either like be in the designated like I have to imagine that there's also shelters in New York for this kind of thing. Like when you when you live in the Marvel multiverse, like they're essentially bomb shelters. So you can see there are people grouped in there. Um and then you can also see that there's uh you know, just kind of like spots here and there where, where people maybe might be looting might be held by supervillains you know um you can see police activity as well where police have tried to cordon off certain streets national guard have tried to cordon off certain streets mm -hmm. um but yeah madison square garden at least is where juggernaut has been designated and you can so see that just... there are three other points that have not yet been placed so we just trekked all the way from downtown past central park to avengers tower and then we gotta go back down to midtown yep well, who wants to go catch a show? I, I told you with that attitude, I was going to turn around this cart right around and go right back home. Please, please, <laughs> yes. Go ahead, turn the cart around, but also make it a van. But also maybe don't drive. Um, I'll like, have you know, I have my license, law license. Juggernaut said Madison Square, so that's yeah. a so. Southeast corner, if I remember correctly. For me, the player uh, yes. who only been to Manhattan like once. <laughs> so um, from, from what will... my map shows, um, Avengers Tower is pretty near the Chrysler building. Yeah. And then, yeah, Madison Square Garden is, uh, yeah, the, I guess, west west central part of the city, just uh, south of like Bryant Park. North it, Park. It, just to play Daredevil's advocate, um, nice. would, would we... We know, so we know where Juggernaut is. That's great. Chances are he's not going anywhere anytime soon. He's also probably one of the stronger threats that are out there. Should we maybe attempt to investigate one of the other generals to see if maybe there's someone that we could take on, you know, probably a little bit easier than we did, like, say, these AIM agents? Agreed. I would love it for some of these AIM agents to be the other generals. That would be great. That would be amazing. But yeah, sounds good. Um, where do we start? Uh, Jarvis, could you pull up uh, wh where the other energy single, uh, signals are coming from, where the uh, pur pur purported other generals may be uh, posting up? Absolutely. Uh, Tony is still doing some research on that. However, we are currently locating what we believe to be the Wrecking Crew who are also have been designated okay. as a group of generals, oddly enough. Um, it seems to be a bit contentious from what we understand, as uh, the Wrecker was designated as general, and yet uh, Thunderball has always been um, trying to be a leader. Uh, we are still locating their specifics. However, we do, uh, do believe that they are somewhere north of the city. Um, potentially, uh, we are triangulating to Times Square currently. Well, there you go, Jones. Those guys are due for a good punching. Sold. All right. Kurt? All right, then. Let's do it. Uh, okay. You mentioned so. something about a quinjet? <laughs> With that... Let's go ahead and take our break <laughs> as we, we determine no. uh, our Quinjet feasibility. So uh, thank you for joining us for, for this part. We will be back in just about 10 to 15. Uh, so go ahead and do the things. Uh, thank you so much for all the donations that we have uh, gotten some incredible donations so far for PCRF. And uh, we'll continue to do so through the weeks that we are here. Uh, so again, you can impact this game and also donate to a great cause. Uh, go ahead and take care of yourselves and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back, everyone, to Marvel Multiverse Day of Doom, a Marvel Multiverse original uh, official TTRPG from Marvel. Uh, we are, uh, we're jumping back into things. So 
our our ragtag group of heroes uh, have found themselves on the streets of New York, of Manhattan, where uh, a bubble seemingly created by Latvian doom bots and incursion of a uh, Latvian army has taken over the city. And Doom has seemingly tasked certain supervillains who have recently broken out from the raft, wonder who could have done that, as his generals. Uh, the uh, this this group of superheroes have made their way to Avengers Tower, and have uh, have learned of two of the general general groups. Uh, one being the Juggernaut, who uh, they didn't necessarily want to start out with. That's fair, uh, but have designated the Wrecking Crew, uh, who are uh, currently uh, making uh, no shortage of a mess and Times Square as their primary target. So. Uh, they have taken out some AIM agents, they have made their way through the subway, they've gotten big rocks and a couple of guns and maybe a sword here or there, uh, and seem to be ready to go. So, uh, you all still are at Avengers Tower until uh, you all feel, you know, ready to head out, uh, but uh, Times Square seems to be your, your designated target, where you do know that the five members of the Wrecking Crew are uh, currently making uh, quite a bit of a mess. And should you ever need, like, like the names of the the characters or like who they are, things like that, feel free to ask if you you know if you don't want to Google the the Marvel uh, multiverse website or wiki. Would we, uh, uh, just as a, a, a small mechanical point, would we yeah. consider our time at the Avengers Tower at all to be any sort of the equivalent of like a short rest or something to regain uh, any focus or anything we used during the previous? Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Basically, anytime that you all head back to Avengers Tower, you can consider that like there's enough technology there and, and enough just like rest recuperation and safety that if you can make it back to Avengers Tower in between fights, we can consider that enough that you're going into the, the next fight doing whatever else um, fresh and, and ready for it. Everybody got that? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I guess we're going to go to Times Square. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anybody, Everybody in the clown car. I... <laughs> Kirk uh, comes out of, of uh, Wolverine's room with uh, two katanas basically uh, strapped uh, to his hips. And it says, the best thing about Wolverine being on every team in existence is that it's always really easy to borrow his stuff. Oh, um, we should get comms. Yeah, make sure we all have standard communications. Yeah, because cool. yeah. and she holds up her shitty little smartphone. This is this is not, this is not going to do it. Um, Jarvis, where are the comms? Uh, yes, communication devices will be waiting for you by the front door. Great. Can I get a double set in case we break all of ours? Certainly, Miss Jones. Miss Jones. Oh. Yeah. This only uh, works, by the way, if you don't put all of us on Do Not Disturb. One time. It was one time. It was It was one time. We were against the Mandarin. It was... You were all loud. <laughs> also I'm... keep in mind that communications will only be within the city itself proper, and <clears throat> actually the island itself proper, and will not extend beyond the bubble until the firewall has been breached. Noted. Noted. So we are alone. No, there are five, well, four of you. Can we, we can contact you as well, Jarvis, through the uh, comms, yeah? Yes, I will do ben. that. There's Fantastic. four and a half of us. <laughs> the half is just because you can't actually literally fight with us, you know, it's not anything to do with the artificial intelligence thing. Your math, as always, Miss Jones, is in flat. All right, Cap, take 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 us take us down. Where do we need to go? We're going by foot, or on wheels. We need uh, a hang glider. We should get the, there. Should be a hang glider set on top of the tower, just, just, just for future reference, Jarvis. As much as I like the <laughs> thought of zipping out of here and dropping down quick with a Quinjet, Squirrel that's going suits. to draw the attention of every Doombot in sight. <laughs> 
into the vans. We get our steps in. Yeah, we can take a van. Yeah, take a van. All right. All right. Marked Everybody by the van driving. it is. Shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> and Jessica hands you a shotgun. Not that one. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, who is driving? Jessica, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking, like, he probably could, though, right? He like, probably could. I, you know, I, he's got I, the 3D. I, 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 like, a lot of, like, the uh, t- automatic driving stuff, it uses, basically, radar sense to, right. to, to drive. And we all know how poorly and, that works. I was gonna say. <laughs> Can you see what street signs are say? <laughs> I, I I just don't know who I'm hitting. Left, left, That's left. the thing. <laughs> it's Straight not these bad guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, great. You all uh, load into the van. Maybe uh, toss a couple of things out the back uh, just to make room. And uh, yeah, you can see that uh, unfortunately there are no seatbelts in here. AIM apparently doesn't drive with seatbelts. Uh, but you all are are loaded in. The van starts up easily enough, and although there is although there is a lot of like detritus in the road, there's a lot of broken down vehicles, a lot of smashed vehicles. I mean, you can at a certain point almost like see the path that the juggernaut or an equivalently big villain took through the city because it's just like there's holes in buildings, there's footprints on top of cars, you know, there's overturned police cars here and there. But uh, Jessica, why don't you go ahead and give me uh, an agility roll for for driving? If you have anything for for vehicles, you can add it to that. I, I'm not sure she has. She actually has a driver's license, but um, we're gonna see what happens. You She's know, a New, New Yorker. Yorker. That's almost a we, good we thing. have. Yeah. To be fair, we have a court date for that. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna win this time. You said agility. Mm-hmm. That's a twelve. Okay. So. <laughs> You're able to maneuver pretty well through the streets. Um, you know, you you may curb it every now and then, but you know that's that's just to take out the the you know the the pay parking kind of things. It's just it's just to knock down the sign that says no parking. It's and it's also to like get out of the piles of burning trash and maybe you know you almost turn down a road where there's a bunch of convicts that are all setting fire to stuff but you're, you're able to to divert around that i think i can be forgiven for doing a little bit of damage when there are people tearing up buildings so who would even notice you can just exactly you know, yeah blame it on cap, will. cap will notice cap, I was... <laughs> <laughs> just keep it a tally um in terms of cap um yeah. i'm thinking that i'm not going to have him run a uh, ride conventionally in the back of the van because he's going to want to see and scope out uh, everything uh, battle tactic before it happens. So he's going to be cl- clinging to the top of the windshield, uh, where the windshield meets the top of the van. And he's literally going to be sort of in a ready position with the shield out, ready to basically just leap off the van in some kind of trajectory to hit something. Right. Um, that is good to know. Uh, as I will get a uh, oh, vigilance roll. Is with... he then? <laughs> <laughs> I will get a vigilance roll with Edge from Cap. Uh, Jessica, just regular vigilance roll from you as uh, you are kind of like really like weaving to get to, to close enough to Times Square. Um, and as you're, you're kind of like pulling down that, that main strip there, Edge is uh, there. that's why I'll get the roll from the two of you. We're rolling with Edge. Okay, okay, okay. 9, 11, 13. Oh. I used all of my interesting rolls in the beginning, and now I'm just getting normal boring rolls. <laughs> Weird. Oh, there we go. Reroll. Oh, boo. Only a 16. A 16? Yep. Okay. Uh, so, Cap, you will see this first. Uh, Jessica, I uh, will actually get another roll from you. As a police cruiser uh, comes diving out of the air, almost like to slam into the ground where the where the van is about to be. You're coming down 7th, 
or I guess up seventh. And uh, just this police cruiser, like sirens blaring. Cap, you're able to see this first. So I will give you, again, edge on uh, your your role to get out of the way of this thing. Uh, but Jessica will give you a regular role of agility to do- to basically, you know, stop or alter the course of the van to not, like, have a police cruiser land on the the you know the front of your your vehicle. Someone in terms of logistics. Me... Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, in terms of logistics, how fast were we traveling? How far away was the car thrown from? Uh, f- how fast you're traveling? I have to imagine Jessica travels with some sort of uh, Alacrity. yeah, some some level of speed, but it also is still New York. So a I'm going to say certain level pro- of reckless driving. <laughs> yeah, probably no more than forty miles an hour because there's a lot of stuff on the road. But, sure. Uh, and the vehicle did it come straight at us though so i would basically if i leapt i would have a parabolic arc into whatever it's tossed the car at us uh potentially yeah it's it's pretty far so the the car got thrown more than 30 feet so you you could jump towards but would not necessarily reach whatever through the vehicle come on um remind me uh can edge be claimed um like if I wanted to claim the edge in the in, in the uh, donation pool, uh, can that be claimed before the roll or after the roll? You can do you can do either. I'll, I'll Great. Consider that. Let's see what happens. And you can also like sell me on edge. Like if you think that you know if Jessica ha- does have some. I sort have of thing. I have no edge here. Jessica Fair doesn't know how to try really. <laughs> but if that ever does come up, you're like, oh, I think that they have experience with this sort of thing, or you know. Yeah. So. Um, it's a fifteen for me. Okay. No edge. All right. There. Um, so, Jessica, are you looking to stop or turn? Um, I'm looking to swerve. Swerve. Okay. Uh, you were able to successfully swerve around this cruiser as it does land just, and again, just compresses into the, the pavement in front of you and you're able to swerve around it. Cap with the, the van is able to successfully move. You were able to either successfully hold on with your role or do something else what what would you like to do um is the van continuing to move it is yeah well okay. I, I guess then i'm gonna hold on that, yeah okay okay uh so holding on uh, tight your your red boots swaying a little bit back and forth but but holding on you said like a sorry cap <laughs> do, do. yeah yeah easy you're fine. on those ter- easy on those turns blind car <laughs> here's your turn signal um, you continue towards <laughs> uh, towards Times Square, where you can see that there is just like like electricity is is kind of shooting out from some of the main screens. All the screens are are cracked. There's holes in, in all of the pavement, and it's it's kind of like there's so much destruction just going or just rampant destruction that the van doesn't even really seem to be noticed at first so i'll I'll throw that at at you all uh but you all would be able to see uh throughout the probably a little cracked windshield now uh that the wrecking crew is just like having a heyday like there's no necessarily like there's no necessary target there's no necessarily point to what they're doing they are just destroying as much as they can in this wide open space they're throwing cars at each other they're like they're almost like playing like baseball with with uh, cars that are just sitting around and you kind of get like the police cruiser wasn't targeted at you it's just what was what was thrown from um i see i need to remember their names uh it looks like pile driver is throwing stuff towards bulldozer who is just like just smashing cars like left and right stuff's going into buildings again the screens are all broken and there's there's nobody around the planet hollywood is devastated uh the rainforest cafe just uh i I can't even and and so that's what you're kind of like you've swerved into so again you do have a moment here if you did want to move in stealthily otherwise you are more than welcome to drive this van straight into any number of the the five uh so you do have as you're kind of looking around you have pile driver bulldozer demolisher who i was not necessarily familiar with but is the youngest newest member uh who was not magically charged uh of the the wrecking crew and uh, then you would also see Wrecker and Thunderball uh, who are further away and seem to be in each other's faces and, and are kind of, there's a lot of like pointing in each, in each other's faces. 
Um, anything else you might want to notice, we can do vigilance rolls, but that's kind of like as the van swerves around, you kind of like can scan the area real quick and see the, the wrecking crew all just about. I imagine civilians are nowhere to be found. Uh, civilians are nowhere to be found as far as you can tell. Um, over the comms. Cap, which one you want? Yep. Who's closest? Uh, I would say probably who's closest to you all right now would be uh, Pile Driver, who is oh, yeah, I've had, uh, currently. I've encountered him car. before. Yep. Uh, we don't need the van. All right. Uh, th then I will pull up somewhere nice and stealthy and just quietly. No, no, I was expecting you to drive into him. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Uh, then I will go ahead and floor it directly toward Pile Driver. Okay. And I'm, and I'm going to try and get like well, get like a little swerve going so that I can catapult Cap um, at like, this guy with a little bit more momentum. Little tap on the thing. Kurt, get Daredevil and, Jess and Jessica out of there. All right. All right. And... So uh, this will be another kind of surprise roll real quick, but we're, we're not going to roll for initiative just yet. Well, let's, let's try to resolve all this real quick. Because um, I need to determine how much damage a van driving at 40 miles an hour does to a super villain. I'm glad um, you asked. Uh, actually. <laughs> Where's my size categories? is a huge uh, it object. Is, it is just a big? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it That's... is. Uh, plus two attack, plus two damage multiplier, up to five targets. It's great. <clears throat> okay. The, Jen, I, I know just uh, so if you want to go ahead and roll a melee attack with that and uh, then Aaron if you for Nightcrawler if you want to roll a uh, an agility check um, this will be to determine how like it, I mean you can you can pull them out probably pretty quickly it's not going to be a high check uh, but just mm -hmm. you're traveling with two extra people we'll just we'll see how efficiently you can do this Okay, that is a 15. Okay, 15 will absolutely do it. So, Jessica, full pedal to the floor, last second, you, you know, feel a three-fingered hand on your shoulder, and bam, smell brimstone later, you find yourself no longer in the van, maybe, you know, standing on the street, standing by a car, what, what have you. Um, Jen, how much uh, damage does the van do? Um... Well, the, the attack is a 17, if that hits. Thank you, um, yes. Um, yes, a 17 does hit. I don't see, like, a definitive... I see a damage multiplier modifier, but I don't see an actual, like, damage, like, number. I can, ju the... I can just <clears throat> use the melee attack, but... Yeah, well, let's go ahead, um, use the, the multiplier, and then just roll uh, uh, your 616, roll your, your d6. Which I believe okay, there so, is a crit if you don't want to use that. Yeah. Um. You know what? It, it, does anyone care if I use the crit? Not at all. Let's just use the crit to make it fun. Um, yeah, why not? Yeah. So what is that? Max damage? Is it max? It would be, uh, I think we'd add your multiplier and then plus two for the van, right? Yes. Yeah, so my, my multiplier is a, uh, is a times five, making it a times seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so 42. <laughs> Actually, if it's a, if it's an auto, it's an auto hit or an auto crit. Auto crit. And that it, would be is... double. Yes. On top of that. Yes. Do you just do eighty four damage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, okay. Boom. Let me uh, <laughs> keep track of this. I'm just picturing like the van going up in flames because absolutely it does. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It. Like, the van is smush. The van doesn't the... exist anymore. <laughs> No. Uh, Pilot Driver still man? does. Yes. Yes, he does. So... But what if he didn't? But what if he didn't? Yeah, he uh, just well, let's find out. So, he just ate uh, a van, though. I'd like to roll Omnipotence and uh, erase him from existence. <laughs> I haven't read that, that Jessica Jones comic. Uh, Cap, what are you doing as the, the van? As soon uh, as it impacts, I'm imagining the, the force of the van is going to basically send it upwards, and I'm going to basically yes. use that momentum leap off the van and uh, carry me into the next one. Okay. So okay. whoever's closest after that. Yes. So Hopefully uh, in a line, a straight line. 
you would be able to land uh, pretty much on top of Boldo. Boldo. Excellent. Okay. So, um, would you like? You have your your surprise, your bonus round uh, for bulldozer. Would you Would you like to use an attack for that? That's going to be a, I guess, just a standard shield bash. Okay. Because I got to absorb the impact of hitting him in the first place, I guess. Um. So, is that? I guess, technically. And here's something that I'm gonna sort of appeal to your, 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 your narrator. Sure. Yeah. Quirkiness. Would this be a fastball special? I was wondering I about that. I, I mean, it kind of <laughs> is, right? Like it's a, it's a haphazard fastball special. Sure. Yeah. You've kind so, of you, you've teen wolfed a fastball special into this. <laughs> absolutely. And that means, uh, where's my thing? up the thing in my book sorry quick quick um, but then at that point what I take a close attack at the enemy I'm thrown or fired at if the attack is a success the enemy takes double damage right cool Make just check fantastic so you get triple exactly uh, that's a that it work does he have damage reduction yeah of course he does uh, I don't think Bulldozer does. He has oh, yeah. his defense He's got stance. like three, two or three. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm sorry, yes. Two? Because Demiplane is asking me for that in advance. Gotcha. To okay. It factors it in, apparently. Yes, Unless you would choose me not to. That's fine. Uh, no, no, that's perfectly fine. Um, like I said, it I am still... It does the math for us. It's lovely. <clears throat> um, okay, so I'm sorry. How much damage is it two? I, in fact, did roll a three, a marvel, and a five. Okay. All right. So it does uh, marvel times five, minus two is three, plus six times two, 48 damage, apparently. Okay. Straight so... off his number. Fantastic. Uh, great. And then... There we go. Cool. All right. Uh, so, to... to do my job and narrate what happens um the van accelerates with um one one star spangled hero on top and the three uh the rest of you below um jessica jones pedal to the floor uh slams just the the front of this van completely just tin canning against uh pile driver you you almost feel the impact like you start to feel some of that newtonian force just as kurt is able to teleport you all out and it's almost like you you feel like a missed sneeze as like that newtonian force just kind of like is gone in 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 the blink of an eye and with the smell of brimstone you find yourself standing on the street and looking at the at the aftermath as cap goes flying shield in hand towards bulldozer who cap you can kind of see through this like almost juggernaut like helmet that he wears uh the eyes go wide as he did not anticipate an avenger being flung in his face uh <laughs> and yet uh the shield uh you know com just absolutely conflicts with the the metal of his helmet you get this sizable just like slice dent from the edge of the shield that you are fastball specialed into and uh the van just completely explodes all of the haphazard tech that was in the the back of it combined with probably a fuel leak that hadn't been dealt with because aim doesn't take care of their vehicles just pile driver also has the immovable um trait so uh, amidst this explosion kind of hair blown back this this guy in this you know white tank top with almost a luchador-esque mask just kind of like turns and looks at, at all of you and and goes ah oh, shit ah god damn it and he he turns like in the middle of this explosion which already has caught the attention of of thunderball and wrecker and goes soaps and uh, you see uh, Demolisher, who's like j just this like kind of slight girl who's been swirling a, a wrecking ball on a chain. She just goes, ah, oh, hell yeah, I've been waiting for this shit. And she hops up, uh, ready to do combat. Let's go ahead and roll for initiative. As, I've fought uh, bigger bullies than these on these streets. Who are they expecting, a naked cowboy? 
Yeah, he's there for some reason. I said there's no civilians, but yeah. he's still there. He's, he's still, still there. there. <laughs> My four initiative no. rolls are so garbage today. Yeah, me too. Ooh, it's a this fucking one nine. Wasn't great. Uh, nine. That's ten. Sixteen. Okay. <laughs> so. Oh, excuse me. Um. Fourteen. I'm right. not sure how to re-roll it specifically with Edge. You re-roll your uh, Marvel die. No, I just it didn't want to. I mean, it, I guess I have oh, to consider which Oh, you're which using one. the um, the, the demi digital. point, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, sixteen. Unfortunately, they are all not the same, so they all do get their own roles. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's okay. You could just have... nicely and let and let us pummel them. Yeah, you could just have they them really give should. up. You could. I'll just stare them down again. It's fine. It worked last time. Yeah. An X Man, an Avenger, and two Defenders showed up. I think they should just go home. Yeah. Okay. We're They're... totally not like outnumbered or anything. Not at all. Call it a day. Exactly. And Maybe they can still get tickets to Hamilton. I don't know. Yeah, you know, that's that's a tough thing. It's, it's off-Broadway at this point. Oh. Uh, yeah, Rucker they, seems like a cat's guy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> He's really into uh, magical Mr. Mistopheles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always cries during uh, memories. Uh, he and... still doesn't know what a jellical cat is. Do any? Does anybody? I don't know. Who does? <laughs> Tiger is there. I know. Black Panther <laughs> gets the lead every time. <laughs> uh, okay, so order is going to be uh, Cap, Pile Driver, Daredevil. Uh, Demolisher, um, Nightcrawler, uh, I wrote TV Thunderball, Jessica Jones, Bulldozer, Wrecker. Hey, okay. well, it's going to be a busy fight, but you know, that's, that's what's here for. So we didn't really get uh, a lot of chance to do this because the aim agents were pushovers, uh, but you will have your, your action, uh, which does include movement. So you'll be able to move, uh, perform an action. Uh, and then you will also have a reaction, which you can introduce at any point. So reaction is stuff like uh, introducing a fastball or um, escaping, helping a teammate, interposing, ramming, releasing, or skulking. Uh, those are all examples of, of reactions. So you also might have superpowers, which might be reactions as well. That's kind of how we'll play this. Uh, so with that... Uh, I'm going to change up music real quick. And Cap, you were up first. You were essentially face to face uh, with uh, Bulldozer. Uh, what would you like to do? I'm going to. Uh, where is it? Where is my thing? Rico shield. I'm going to spin around, chuck the shield at Pile Driver. Okay. I'm going to bounce it off of Pile Driver, hopefully. Uh, and if it works bounce it off of bulldozer as well okay love that well depending on how many successes i get that's right <laughs> agility yeah i should know pile driver is looking really rough the, the white tank top is like scorched and torn uh he's like holding his head like he's got a really bad headache there's just like the the car has essentially created like a u-shape around him like it's, it's almost wrapped around him at this point and he is just standing in the the flaming wreckage of it just kind of almost dazed at this point um in fact i i'm happy since you did use the um the the crit there i'm i'm going to give him the stunned condition uh, so oh. fantastic use of that that makes it better though because he's it does automatically hit doesn't he uh i think he has you you have um edge on your roll for a stun. Yeah, all attacks have an edge, yeah. Oh, well, that's alright then. Come on, Marvel. Go. 
Oh, well. Only a 17. I did not get a Marvel success, so I do not get to bounce it off of somebody else. A 17 does hit Pile Driver, though. So I did, with his damage reduction, I'll look that up, if that's okay, um, 24 points. Uh, yes, uh, even Frame. with his damage reduction, more than enough to to take down what was left of Pile Driver. Nice. Uh, so, uh, Cap, would you like to describe uh, what this looks like? Take down our first uh, one. Basically, after bouncing off of uh, bulldozer, sorry. Uh, basically, hitting bulldozer, doing a backflip, taking the shield, throwing it behind me, hitting pile driver cleanly in the back of the head, knocking him into the dash of the remaining dash in the windshield of the uh, the van, and it comes back to me um, down, and then basically into a three point stance, superhero landing, uh, and ready to basically fend off. Whatever's coming. Absolutely incredible. All right. Uh, Pile Driver was up next, but he is uh, conked out. Conked out hard. Go team. Uh, Daredevil, it is your turn. All right. I'm going to uh, kind of take aim at Bulldozer, and I am going to uh, perform a leg sweep to try to knock them prone. Okay. Boom! Here we go. That's going to be a uh, 12. Right. I'm assuming that's uh, melee. A 12 will, will not beat his defense score. Uh, oh boy. So. Go for the the leg sweep, but it is a and these things are like tree trunks, like he's very thick solid dude. leg. Um, can I use a reaction? Yeah. Oh wait a minute. Um, you know what? No, I think I'm good. Uh, I'm good. I'm going to uh, kind of try to backflip out of the reach of bulldozer then, and uh, just kind of. Uh, kind of ready myself with my uh my billy club in my hand okay all oh, right shit. did uh, we ever figure out our maneuver our team maneuver not yet <laughs> this could be the battle where you where you all decide uh if you all did want to land on a maneuver whether it be uh defense offense or um blast rally. rally rally um you uh you absolutely can can figure out what that move looks like in this fight uh but yeah bulldozer kind of like looks down as as Daryl, you go for a leg sweep and just like it's again, it's like leg sweeping uh, like a hundred year old oak tree, and he just looks down with these eyes and he goes, "I was having fun." And with that, uh, it is Demolisher's turn, and she comes in just again swinging this wrecking ball over her head. Uh, I mean, from what I can tell, again, I the even the history of her is very nondescript. Of like, oh, she was trained by Wilson Fisk to be super strong. Otherwise, she's just a Latine uh, near teenage girl who really likes destroying stuff and has just just a love for destruction. Uh, so she comes swinging in towards Cap, like, "Hey, Grandpa, I'm gonna beat the hell out of you, okay?" Uh, and so she is going to uh, take an attack at you, Cap. So that's gonna be. Uh, let's see. I, that's, I don't think that's gonna hit. That is only a. Uh, that's only an eleven. Uh, nope. With her, uh, yeah. So uh, unfortunately, her her first attack does not land. I'm trying to think, she has exploit first Pling. attack, hit and run, first attack, whirling frenzy. Okay. Um, I think. And here's where I here's here's the problem with supervillains is they don't necessarily list all the things that their stuff can do. So I'm still trying to memorize Truth. all the stuff. So hit and run, just close attack. Okay, blah blah blah. <laughs> okay. So the attack was not a success. Uh so the, the wrecking ball just clangs off of your vibranium right. adamantium shield. And uh she, she continues just kind of like swinging overhead, almost like a bolo. Um, just ready for the next attack, but that is it for her turn. So, uh, next up, Nightcrawler. All right. 
so you said that uh, Thunderball and Wrecker were a short distance away, right? Yes. So in, in Times Square, there's that like weird, almost like angular shaped thing with like steps on it. They're they're at the top of those steps and seem to like even at this point, they're they're kind of like there's something in their hands that they're fighting over and kind of just like yelling at each other. Um, since since you brought that up, um, go ahead and give me a free vigilance roll. Okay. That is a uh, 13. Okay. Uh, so, Kurt, I think as, as you're kind of moving in and you notice the, the two of them up above, you notice that behind that is, um, like, standing shoulder to shoulder uh, from what you can tell about 20 Doombots that are all standing completely still. There's no light behind their eyes. They seem to be non-active at this point. And you can't necessarily tell what the what Wrecker and Thunderball are fighting over, but with Doombots there, you you, you kind of are, are putting together that there might be some control for leadership right now. All right. Uh, in that case, uh, Nightcrawler is going to... I'm, I'm going to use my move to just use my, my teleport uh, ability to uh, teleport over closer to them. And... Okay. Uh, then unsheath both swords and say, look, we don't want trouble. Uh, but oh, wait, which one of you is in charge? <laughs> they both look at you in unison. Or... I am. Of course. But that's confusing. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to try and like dis try and distract. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, distraction actually absolutely is something that you can do. Um, so if you want to roll me a... I'm going to say logic. It might be ego. I might be wrong about that. I'll double check later. But if you want to roll me a logic roll um, to see if uh, they will have uh, um, trouble. I get an edge on ego checks to, to, okay. to uh, get people to pay attention to me. So can it be that? Do you have Wisecracker? Um, I have presence. Okay. I do not. Yeah, in the future it might be ego because I'm seeing Wisecracker use his ego, but we can use logic for this one. Unless your ego is better. My ego is better. Okay, if you want to use ego, go for it. Okay. Uh, that is 4M4, which is a uh, 17. Okay. Uh, so. 17. Uh, absolutely beats both of them, so they will have um, trouble on on their next rolls as they are uh, now actually getting pretty close to brawling with one another. Uh, you see Wrecker, you know, green outfit, purple striped, you know, the, like stocking cap kind of mask, uh, crowbar in one hand. He kind of points the, the what you would know as guardianly enchanted crowbar at you and goes, Listen, Elf, just mind your own business, okay? I've got something I've got to deal with here. I've got a small army, I'm the new general, and I'm already having to deal with being usurped. Oh, you are you are the new general then, so you are in charge, and and not Thunderball. Thunderball, again, um, you know, yellow and green outfit, kind of looks new, goes, Kurt, come on. We, we all know who the more intelligent gentleman here is. I'm honestly tired of being under this asshole's boot. If you wouldn't mind just helping me assert a little control, I'm. I just think that you know New York could use uh, intelligent minds such as mine, and not somebody who's just looking to smash police cars into the Empire State Building. I mean, come on, Dirk. What what, what even is the point? And uh, with that, uh, I think we'll go to our, our next roll here. Um, so it is. 
It is Thunderball's turn. Uh, I'm gonna say Thunderball is uh, he is he is similarly um, armed as Demolisher is. He has uh, you know chain with a very large uh, wrecking ball on the end of it, and uh, he is going to use Whirling Frenzy. Uh, so unfortunately, Kurt, you are in this, um, but he's going to make an attack <laughs> against um, basically everybody within range. Dang. I'm going to use uh, my reaction to blink <laughs> and to be three spaces away from where I am currently. All right. So. Where are There we go. Okay. So agility check. Okay, so um, he does land an attack against Wrecker, and so his and. Uh, rolled a, his marble die, uh, rolled an M on the marble die. So, um, that will be... Fucking Thanks. love villain infighting. Mm -hmm. uh, 28 points of damage against Wrecker. EVE. Uh, I'm sorry? EVE, as in enemy versus yes, enemy. Absolutely. <laughs> the opposite of PvP. <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, uh, 26 with damage reduction. So, uh, yes, you would watch as the, the Wrecking Ball smashes into Wrecker, uh, who goes uh, flying back and, and off of this this raised platform. And um, you can see... Actually, I'm going to kind of make a roll between them here to see who ends up with the device. Okay. Uh, you see Thunderball ends up with the device in his hand, some sort of controller-looking thing about palm-sized and uh, you can see the Doombot's eyes begin to light up as he he kind of grips it and goes, See, I told you. I told you I was the stronger man. Here we proved it. Isn't that right, Night... Oh. He, like, looks to see where, where Nightcrawler went. Um, we're cool, right? Like... <laughs> yes, we are cool. Just give me that uh, crowbar and we will go away. Not you too. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll beat your ass too. That's fine. Uh, with that, let's go to Jessica Jones. Fantastic. Jessica Jones is currently being uh, assailed by a giant cat, uh, but we'll but we'll do her best. Uh, yes. What is yeah, the... Jessica jo Felicia Hardy is there? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is the uh who is the closest uh wrecking crew friend to me? Uh Bulldozer and Demolisher are pretty equidistant from okay. where you are. And Bulldozer has already been damaged, correct? Correct. Fantastic. I'm gonna go punch him a bunch. Um <laughs> so <laughs> um are bulldozer are bulldozer and demolisher next to each other? Or are they pretty far away from each other? They're I'll, I'll say they're they're pretty they're pretty close to each other. Yeah, we could say they're next to each other. Okay, like specifically, like are they banging heads distance from each other? I, I'm gonna say that they are. So with Cap and Daredevil there, I think that there's probably like a hero in between them. Okay. Like if we're talking four squares, they would be diagonal with like Daredevil and Cap also there. So banging heads would be a little clunky if you pardon the. Thing. Okay. 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 Um, okay, so in that case, I think I'm going to go and attempt. Fuck it. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? I'm going to go ahead and attempt a clobber um, on Bulldozer, which is just an attack, except if I do real fucking well, then they get knocked prone. That's true. So let's see what happens. Okay, what well, could be worse? Uh, 11. Uh, 14? Mm, a 14 is exactly what you need. Oh, thank fuck. All right, uh, that's <laughs> 23 damage. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, there's no proning, unfortunately, but... 
At least I did some damage. Uh, looking pretty rough. Not uh, definitely not as rough as Pile Driver, who's still like you know, almost lounging in the the wreckage of the van uh, at this point, just completely knocked out. But uh, yeah, Bulldozer is uh, almost near surrounded by by heroes at this point. Is, is showing a, a lot of a lot of damage. You definitely winded him with that uh, that attack there, right. that clobber. Uh, with that, it is Bulldozer's turn. Oh no. Um. What could possibly go wrong? Let's see. Well, if we're all close enough. <clears throat> I think Bulldozer is going to use a round shaking stop. Oh, damn it. <laughs> what are you Y'all are. I hate are being a narrator part. and knowing what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> if like, he oh, does. No. If he succeeds, I will be using a reaction. Okay. Uh, maybe I check if there's that to agility. Okay, so this will be compared to your agility defense. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. If anything that'll count. So. Uh, that is going to be a. Uh, that is a twenty. Oof. So. Um. It's gonna hit everybody. Okay. All right. Rea- I'm gonna use a reaction. Okay. Uh, and that reaction is going to be a counter strike technique. Deal half of the attacker's damage back to the attacker. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's figure out what damage is here. So uh, that is three. So thirty-four damage in total. So wow. uh, yeah. Uh, Daredevil is, is like the, the stomp goes down seeing that there he's now like on one leg you're able to kind of like sweep that leg and and knock bulldozer to the ground real quick so that reverberation kind of he, he takes a little bit as well um, so I'm sorry the 34 actually is is halved because with ground shaking stomp you take half of the damage uh, mm-hmm. so I have also a question yes would you apply my minus four uh, sturdy or my shield um, it has vibranium. It absorbs shockwaves. Why not? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's seventeen base damage minus whatever your your damage reduction would oh, happen. To be. Uh, whatever the marvel dice was multiplier. Uh, the marvel the yeah the marvel die actually landed on the marvel die. So his oh. his yeah. So his total damage was thirty four. Ground shaking stomp halves that. So, 17 damage, and then reduce that however your character reduces it. Doesn't... I far I enough it. away, I hate or being am a I still affected to it? Uh, doesn't, sorry, no. a, doesn't a Marvel success on Ground Shaking Stomp cause full damage to everybody? Well, I'm sorry, it wasn't It wasn't a fantastic success. Oh, okay. I just rolled the Marvel... I rolled the M on the Marvel die. It was a 4M4. Four, 414. Four, four. Isn't that still fantastic? I, don't... I think it is because it's it's fantastic versus a crit. Okay, that's okay. There yep. we go. Learning something. Um, so in in that case, uh, yes, you are right. I'm um, getting punched in the face. <laughs> so um, this is the part where I'm not sure about. So I so rolled a crit on the damage. So what does that mean? Uh, that would cause double damage, and if I remember, ground shaking okay. stomp everybody in the area of effect it takes full damage and okay. something. In, in that case, yes. I'm sorry. You all would take 34 points of of damage, and then uh, bulldozer will be taking 17. Yeah. So it looks like it's fantastic success versus ultimate fantastic roll. Okay. Is Thank the terminology you. that is that was a clarification I needed. So I still take full damage, but half of that damage goes back onto the. Yes, so um, okay. Jessica Jones, uh, Captain America, Daredevil will all take full damage. Nightcrawler, you are far enough away, you will not. Um, Demolisher is actually going to take uh, damage because she is there as well. Uh, and then... What the is full... the damage multiplier of... Uh... Uh, the damage multiplier is times five. So I'm minus four from that. Okay, cool. So, so I in take that case... five, six times one is six plus is multiplier. Oh, and it looks like we're also knocked prone. And we're knocked prone. Yes. However, I would like to use my immovable to not do that. Is that is, is that a thing that I can do? Um, 
because the trigger what? is I am knocked back or knocked prone. The effect oh, yeah. is that I reduce knock back by three spaces. I don't know how that applies to prone though. Um, I think three spaces. Yeah, I think you could you could stay standing. I have that. that too. Okay. Uh, so, so I take nothing and keep standing there. Yeah. Excellent. N neither of you are prone. Then. I still hurt, but at least I'm not prone. I think I'm prone. Uh, I take. No, no, sure. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks for walking me through that. That's still that's still the weird thing when it's it does damage reduction. It's from the multiplier and yeah. Okay. Um, it's Wrecker's turn. Uh, Wrecker, uh, now focused on Thunderball, is going to roll his attack. Uh, so while I am rolling all that up, uh, Cap. It will be your turn uh, next. So if you want to go ahead and do your thing, I'm just basically going to be having these two pummel each other back and forth. Sure. So what have we got? We had uh, Bulldozer who just took a stomp, took out uh, his friend. So I'm going to follow that up with... Um, hmm. You know what? I'm going to do something different. Uh, where is it? Looking at my combat support. Um, once per battle, the character chooses an ally in the earshot. Uh, if the ally makes an action check before the start of the character's next turn, the ally automatically rolls a one on their marble die. Okay. And that dice cannot be affected by trouble. So, I'll be, uh, Cap will call out um, Jessica! There's a weak spot under his chin on the with his helmet. Hit him there. And she will give you a very sassy salute. <laughs> Alright. Um, kids today. With the kids today indeed. Uh <laughs> with that, Daredevil, it is your turn. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I'm prone, so I'm actually gonna take one uh square movement to stand up. Mm -hmm. Alright, from there I am going to uh oh boy all right i am going to take a um i'm going to take an attack stance which uh is a concentration uh standard action that uh, doubles my melee ability bonus to damage and i'm just going to try to uh hit bulldozer with the billy clubs Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, just a flat out, just very aggressive strike. Let's mm -hmm. see what let's see if we can make something happen here. Okay. It's not bad. Um, seventeen. A seventeen, I believe, for bulldozer does hit. Absolutely. Cool. Uh two times three is six plus four is ten and then with attack stance double the melee ability bonus uh so that would be yeah okay so that'd be another four so 14 was that four what did i say four ten so 14 14 okay yeah sorry no worries no let's wait we're all figuring this out uh yeah bulldozer had three hit points left uh oh. so Nice. You'd like to uh, describe how you take down Bulldozer? Absolutely. Uh, so I, I actually hear uh, what Cap says to Jessica, and mm -hmm. um, you know I kind of just take the initiative to come up with my Billy Club underneath his helmet where his chin is. But I use the other arm to like jam it <laughs> right up under his chin mm -hmm. and uh, just knock him the frack out. And Cap Jessica turns. You got any other words of wisdom? I, I, also give, I give Cap and also a sassy salute. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for Daredevil not to like eavesdrop. Um, yeah, uh, yeah uh, you know what? Hit him, hit him on the chin. It's always always good advice. So we could absolutely carry over the uh, the good advice that Jessica got. Um, with that, it is Demolisher's turn, who kind of like 
the three of you turn to face her and she's just got this like she's almost frothing at the mouth with how excited she is to face off against against three heroes and again it's just swirling that wrecking ball uh she is going to use uh whirling frenzy uh because there are three of you and she's got you all right there uh so well let's say she rolled a 16 plus her agility is just plus one so a 17 um Jeez. and the, that's against uh agility defense uh so, so so that's like half damage okay so it's just going to be half damage uh which is going to be we'll say it, half damage will be six and for dr how does that work again you just you, you just decrease the multiplier uh, yes, I believe so. So her multiplier is uh, times two. Okay, so I have dr, I have dr one. So, uh, so what was her marvel die? Uh, her marvel die was a six. Okay, I see. So wait, what? What? So oh, I'm so sorry. What happens if I have dr one? She rolls. She she has a like a a one times multiplier. What happens if I have a dr of one? If it goes down to a multiplier of zero, you take no damage. Okay. I was like, th that seems too good. I did but, that okay. wrong the first time, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was so... adding, like, little tiny amounts. People's I was like, should I just do one? Or... Okay, okay. All right. Yeah, so that's it... good. No, I don't think I've been necessarily doing damage reduction right for the villains, but that's fine. It's our first Who, game. Who else is, I mean, where all three of us are getting attacked? Uh, yeah, so Whirling Frenzy attacks everybody in the area. It's kind of like ground shaking stuff. She's just kind of swinging okay. the, the wrecking ball in an arc to to uh, attempt to strike all three of you. Uh, what but is, again, if, we'll I would like to use a reaction, oh. if I may. Uh, and once, it, once her Whirling uh, spin hits my shield, I block. Mm -hmm. I take no damage because my multiplier is ridiculous. Right. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, Hurled shield block which uh sorry loading um and basically toss it sort of fling it over to block when it's coming at daredevil mm -hmm. uh so that he gains a multiplier of or uh health damage reduction of times four that's so it blocks hurt. his thing so nobody gets hurt and then it because of the way the text is the shield then bounces back to the character Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> this poor poor demolisher. We did our best. No, yeah, she's she's definitely like the the one who's yeah she she's she's trying. That's what's important. Definitely has the lowest amount of, of health points. Uh, and, okay. and I'm going to quip. I'm going to say the only thing you're wrecking today is your own ego. That's that's a very good Captain America quip. Go ahead, please take a, a karma point for that. That's that's like something if if like your your grandpa said it to you, you'd be like, "Ow, yep. grandpa, mean." Wow, but like if, that's yeah, so dated and so jaded at the same time. Yeah. He's not angry. He's just disappointed. He's just disappointed. <laughs> yeah, it really it really hurts. Uh, okay, so Nightcrawler, it is your turn. Um, right. I should say, because I didn't necessarily narrate at this point, you you watched as Wrecker got like knocked to the ground and then threw the magic crowbar, uh, striking Thunderbolt like right in the forehead, uh, and then retreat like called it back to him because it's magical like as guardian enchanted weapon. Uh, the Doombots are still like the lights have come on but aren't moving anywhere. As uh, you also note that the remote the control, whatever it is they were fighting over, has been dropped and is kind of clattered down the steps towards you. Okay. Um, MacGuffin, get it! <laughs> I think, yeah, in that case, I am going to uh, grab it and use a uh, teleport object Okay. and bring it with me to, uh, I'm going to say, the roof of whatever building that is within 10 squares of me. Oh, Peter. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you absolutely you can you can make it. I mean, there's some pretty tall buildings in uh, in Times Square, uh, so yeah, you can absolutely uh, teleport your 1,500 I, I... feet. 
I land. This one is only ten squares, not not a hundred squares, because we're in okay. combat. Fair enough. Um, so it's a hundred fifty feet. <laughs> okay. So you can get a hundred and fifty uh, feet up. Uh, Kurt, I think lands on top of the the big Coca Cola uh, sign mm -hmm. in Times Square and says, "I th I think you might be looking for this." Oh, crap. And then, are there like any buttons on it or anything like? <laughs> there are there are too many buttons on it. I think is is the problem. Uh oh. Find the At big random. Red one. Let's push a button. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay. Um, Kurt, go ahead and give me a logic roll. As uh, yeah. you know, you I saw been this in coming. Danger room. <laughs> you've uh, you've been around technology before. You work with Forge sometimes. Sometimes stuff has too many buttons. Uh, go ahead and give me a logic roll to see what button you just haphazardly press. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 1M6. Okay, so that's a 14 total. A 14. Pretty good, honestly. Like, could have been a lot worse. Like, under a 10, bad stuff happens. This is more of, like, more of a neutral thing happens as uh, the Doombots all begin to start marching, kind of, like, breaking around and marching down the street in a very, like almost like near goose steppy sort of way right like the, this the, this is the latvarian march and you start hearing the national anthem of latveria start to blare from their speakers as you have somehow turned on parade mode all right Picturing everyone i think that's safe enough like... <laughs> uh with that it is Thunderball's turn, uh, who now sees that, uh, Kurt, you have made it uh, 150 feet up and have activated parade mode. Uh, so <laughs> he uh, he kind of lurks to, looks to Wrecker and goes, listen, uh, truce until we get to Blue Elf, yeah? And Wrecker goes, yeah, yeah, all right, fine. Uh, so, I don't think that either of these guys can fly. Um, <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah. That would be bad. They can, however, however, uh, throw their their weapons. So I'm trying to want to see what range is on this. Uh, 150 feet. 100. Exactly. Weird. Three. The range is wow. three. Uh, let's see. Is is the range three? I'm, I'm no. trying to find where. Range no way. The range is three. I'm trying to figure out where the range is like would be on a sight. throwable thunderball and chain. Throwable club. Okay. Would it be anything like the Billy Club, which would be like fifteen spaces? I think that's I think that's what it, it's supposed to be. So yeah, yeah, it's it's listed as a as a throwable club. So yeah, I think it's going to be uh, the yeah, which the, I think theoretically puts it further than the ten spaces. I think that Kurt mm -hmm. travel because <laughs> it was in combat. It was ten spaces. You're right. Uh, yeah. So yes, we are going. To, he's going to try to do which. <laughs> Julian is not really a strong suit. Hey, so. I got I got Sorry. moves. <laughs> this is not even necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it is only an eleven to hit as uh, this wrecking ball just comes like barreling towards you. Does that hit? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, my agility is my Happy agility dog. defense is fifteen. Okay. So the Coca-Cola sign, the one thing that connects the entire multiverse, uh, is just just absolutely smashed through. Um, but you you remain unharmed as the you watch like the the chain begin to move and it, it is summoned back and kind of almost like time reverses goes back into Thunderball's hand. Uh, that is it for his turn. Um, Jessica, it is your turn. I'm going to do something that maybe might be a waste of time, but I have to try anyway. Um, I am going to turn to Demolisher, and I'm just going to be like, look, two of your friends are out. This is not a fight you can win. Stand down. You do not want to do this. Uh, go ahead and give me, uh, give me an ego goal. Um, I would like to also use my uh, glibness trait to have an edge on ego checks to persuade characters that I'm speaking to for the first time. For sure. Are we uh, carrying that uh, the combat? Uh, we absolutely crap? can. Yeah. Then you have an automatic success. Hell. Oh, shit. Well, okay, then. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, cool. So automa- I guess I don't need that. <laughs> but... uh, okay. Automatic I... success. Uh, success. Great. Can uh, I roll just in case I get like a massive one? Yeah. Just in case. I did not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So she's again has like this this frothing smile on her face, just like these wide eyes, and then she she looks at you as you just like walk up, and what I assume is a leather jacket, just looking. Yeah, I'm just cool. like look around you. This is not a fight you can win. Yeah, she looks over. Live to fight another day. She looks at pile driver. She looks at bulldozer. Um, she she looks over at her her two bosses, de facto bosses, who are going <laughs> after each other, and just like the smile kind of fades, and she just goes. I haven't won a fight in a long time. <laughs> Help us. I mean, you lost against Devil Dinosaur. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you want to fight? We'll give you a fight. Help us. If you don't, you can walk away. Couldn't give me another roll for that. We'll, we'll, I'll say she's out of combat. Whether she joins you or not, let's 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 put that to a roll. Uh, that is a five Marvel two, so 11, 13, 14. Um, okay. I'm not going to use the glove this because I've already talked to her. Okay. Uh, she rolled a 15, so she looks at you and she goes, Do that hero ship? Nah, it's not for me. Now I'll just, I'll sit back and watch. She just kind of like, uh, she goes over to Pile Driver and grabs like his ankle and just drags him out of the van, drags Bulldozer by the, the ankle as well, and just like, goes over and, and sits on the wreckage of a vehicle and just like swinging her little feet off the side of it. <laughs> and what? Okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. It's, it's, it's better than nothing. She goes over to the M&M store and it's just like, <laughs> comes out with like a massive bag of M&Ms. You, you 100% took out a fighter without even fighting them, so yeah. That's, that's if anyone that wants to help. Yeah. Knocked. <laughs> I do love that. Uh, that is a very Jessica Jones thing is to be like, listen, I don't want to, like, I'm so tired. I'm so tired all the time. <laughs> I don't want to so, happen. Please take a karma point fight for that. You. I'm just gonna want to fight you. Cool, cool. Um. Okay. So we will. Uh, we'll take Demolisher out. She had 50, uh, 50 hit points left, but uh, you know what? She'll she'll hold on to this. I'll uh, fight another day. Uh. So Nightcrawler. Um. No, I'm sorry. We just did. We just did Jessica. So it is Wrecker's turn. Uh. Wrecker, seeing that. Um. Oh, I can get rid of this whole page. There we go. Uh, Wrecker also seeing that you have gone up there. Can also not fly, but can throw stuff. Uh, so he is going to try to throw his um, I- iconic weapon, his magic crowbar at you. Let's see here. There we go. It was hoping uh, he would. That... I'm going to use uh, blink defense. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make an ego roll. Ooh, fantastic failure. Uh, that's really weird because I was going to I was going to impose my fantastic failure on you. Um, but uh, OK, so yeah, I'm happy to, to narrate bit. this. But if you would like to narrate what your fantastic failure looks like, you are welcome to. I mean, I think for one thing, uh, shirt drops the, the remote. For sure. I'm going to say fantastic failure. You, you drop the remote 150 feet up. You you leave it there, but you also, like, as you're teleporting, like, there's this this hiccup in that, you know, infernal realm that you, you teleport through, and you end up back on street level, like, right in front of Wrecker, right as he's about to throw this thing, and he is going to in- instead take a swing at you. You have the MacGuffin, still secured away from where these these two can necessarily reach it immediately uh but you have put yourself in in the line of fire so uh we're gonna do a um let's do a vicious attack as uh wrecker gets this this nasty looking uh smile on his face so plus tag takes pretty good damage it's double damage so just, okay so uh, that is going to be, dang, a uh, 24. So, uh, what is your damage reduction? That's like goose egg. I would like to use my second reaction. Okay. Shield comes flying in. 
just as he comes down with his vicious attack, mm -hmm. giving Kurt a damage reduction of four. A four. Okay. So is it four total for, for Nightcrawler? Yep. Four total. Okay. Um, so how many, just so I, I, I know, I know this for sure. So I rolled a five on my Marvel die and it's, do I reduce the, the number of the, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Right. Cause it's five times five. So, yep. so the, uh, the times five gets reduced by four. Right. Okay. So it'll be just 11 points of damage as the, the shield of, again, that vibranium absorbs a lot of it, but like that as guardian energy doesn't necessarily get absorbed. And Long. that's kind of what Nightcrawler takes. And then oh somehow God. it comes back to my hand. So, you know, <laughs> somehow they've explained it with magnets and rockets. That thing and everything does else. not obey the laws of physics. And just good skills. Yeah. All right. Uh, fantastic. So um, that actually is the end of our turn order, which is a fantastic place as uh, as we have hit time, and uh, you all have uh, just two left of the five wrecking crew. Uh, so I think let's go ahead and take a pause on there for this week and pick it up next week uh, with more Marvel Multiverse, The Day of Doom. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much to these fantastic players, these fantastic people for embodying these characters so incredibly well. Um, I think everybody at least got a karma point. Uh, I think uh, Daredevil, I, I didn't necessarily give you one early on, so I'm going to give you a karma point for the the kind of like echolocation sort of thing because I, oh, cool. I forgot that I could deal those out until I remembered. So please, please enjoy that. <laughs> um, but yes... Uh, thank you to all of you in the audience for joining to PCRF for just joining us for this game. Uh, this is why we do it is, is fantastic people doing fantastic stuff for fantastic causes. Um, I'm using fantastic a lot because it's like, it's the, it's the one adjective they use in here. Uh, just thank you for joining us. Thank you, uh, for, to these wonderful people. I'm going to have them go around and say a little bit about themselves and where you can find more of them here momentarily. Uh, and then we'll do some sword and key stuff, and then we're gonna wrap up for the for the evening. Uh, so uh, and, until we see you next week. Uh, so let's go ahead and go around. Uh, if you want to say who you are, uh, your socials, any projects you have, uh, anything coming up, uh, anything you want to plug, this is your time. Uh, so Jen, if you don't mind going first. Absolutely. Hello, friends. I have been Jen slash a very sassy Jessica. Um, I can be found uh, on pretty much all socials as Jen Burb. Uh, I do a lot of actual play performance, production, uh, and project management. Um, my, the two most common places I can be found are helping to run things over on Girls Run These Worlds, um, and also on the Lore Mistresses channel uh, in our long-term game that actually airs every other Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, our on week is next week, so if you ha have things to do before this game next week, swing by her channel at the Lore Mistress and watch us at 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, other than that, um, if anyone tells you I'm an actual bird, they're lying, except that they're not. That's all. Uh, I don't know if you're uh, you're the kind of person that believes birds aren't real. I know we also have that subsection of our community. Uh, thank you so much, Jen. Uh, next up, Nick. Hey, everyone. I am Nick LaRue slash Matt Murdock slash Daredevil. Uh, you can find me on most things at Film Snobbery. You can also check out my website, filmsnobbery.com. I'm currently working on a brand new book coming out from CRC Press called Cinematic World Building that takes the, all the things that we're doing here in TTRPG land and fusing them with fun things to, for screenwriters. Uh, and storytellers. So I'm currently interviewing a lot of people for that, uh, specifically TTRPG creators, DMs, GMs, folks all around there, also uh, screenwriters and showrunners. So if anyone would like to talk come talk to me for this book, please come and contact me over, you know, slip into my DMs, whatever you gotta do. Um, I wanna thank, by the way, this was my first time doing an AP. So I wanna thank all the cool people here at uh, Sword and Key, especially Derek and Eva and all them, and 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 the fantastic people here that make everything that comes out of my mouth sound way better uh, uh, with their responses. <clears throat> that is all for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. Uh, and uh, yeah, so if you're ever working on TTRPG projects, we do have a chat show here. We do on Sword and Key called Sword and Tea. Uh, so we would love to have you on for that and uh, yeah. and any other projects anybody might be working on. Um, okay. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Taylor will be joining us next week, who will be playing Spider Bite. Uh, so until then, please check out uh, Taylor's socials. I believe on Twitter, it's at SpunkyTaylor. Uh, and you can find that on our Twitter as well. But yeah, please go uh, support them as well. Uh, next up, Aaron. 
Hi, I'm Aaron. I do a lot of stuff in the tabletop RPG scene. I am a writer, game designer, layout designer, uh, various things. You can find me basically everywhere on uh, at uh, Vale's Edge Games, uh, including uh, you can find my uh, uh, games that I have published on Itch. Uh, most recently, uh, Why Necromancy Doesn't Exist, which is a one-page RPG about arguing over uh, magic made-up taxonomy. Uh, and I have been and will continue to be for the next three weeks, the Swashbuckling Nightcrawler. Fantastic. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, Aaron, if you're ever working on stuff as well, love to have you on Smoking Tea. Uh, okay. Next up, last but absolutely not least, Mike. Check, check, making sure. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, I was... I was Mike. I am Mike. I was playing uh, Captain America. You can catch my pre and post COVID uh, cosplay adventures at, at Canadian Captain America on Twitter and TikTok and the Blue Sky and CDN Cap America on half of those things and TikTok and Blue Sky and Interact uh, uh, Instagram. Thank you. Um, and uh, during the week, uh, right now, I have one project on the go, which is a uh, dual, a tandem game of Marvel, Marvel Multiverse on uh, Would Be Heroes. Uh, Saturdays at 10 a.m. PST and Mondays at 6 p.m. PST, uh, where I'm running a full length campaign that's been going now since January and looks to be wrapping probably around late November, uh, at which point then I'm going to go back into D&D. Uh, other than that, uh, it has been an absolute pleasure to actually be on this side of the narrator screen for once. Uh, and uh, this is a bang up game, and I am looking forward to next week. Thank you so much, Mike. And I'm also very appreciative of you and everyone else for helping me navigate these rules. Um, always great to have uh, a rigor as a, as a player. The, the forever GMs will always have my heart as, as I, am, I am you, I am them. Um, okay uh let's see sorry just checking my messages there we go okay uh i am derek sword yes yeah, sword is my real last name yes it's awesome no you can't have it i use he him pronouns i have been your gm for this game and many games here on sword and key as i am the sword half of sword and key uh that is to say we are a wonderful bustling community of uh many incredible people and you can be them too uh you can find all of sword and key stuff at beacons.ai sword and key you can join our discord there you can find our socials uh twitter instagram and blue sky all of our socials have underscores between the words so sword underscore and underscore key uh but uh, you can also watch our, our Google Calendar on, on Discord as well. You can add to yours if you want to be real cool about it. Um, we have a lot of cool stuff coming up uh, for Sword and Key. Uh, first place to see it is always going to be Discord. The next place is always going to be our socials. Uh, so if you want to keep tuned, that's the best place to do it. But uh, looking at uh, what we are doing in the near future, if I have calendar open, I don't. That's weird. Uh, let's do that. So we have a number of projects returning and some starting this month. Uh, July was kind of our quiet month. August is when stuff's getting loud again. Uh, so on the 6th, we have the return of the only video game we yet stream uh, here on Sword and Key, which is Baldur's Gate 3 because it's D&D &D and I might as well play it. Uh, but that is going to be 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, the 6th, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, uh, where uh, I am joined by Shadow and LDs. So we play Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, we're still in Act 1. We're getting there. It's great. Uh, the ninth is, uh, that is Friday. That is our next Sword and Key movie night. Uh, we're actually watching Jaws because I meant to do it last month and I forgot. So, uh, we have movie nights on our discord. Uh, it is free to join. You are welcome to, to join in. Uh, it's typically 6 PM Pacific time on Fridays, every other Friday. Uh, the 10th, that is Saturday at 3 PM Pacific time will be the return of our three-year ongoing nautical campaign of 5e D, D horizons call very excited to return back to that um the 11th will be the return of marvel multiverse day of doom uh, and that will be playing every sunday throughout the month of august uh the 11th will also be the next episode of monster crush to release monster crush is a podcast that i do with my friend ld where we talk about cryptids creatures miscellaneous monsters from myth from mythology 
and how smoochable they are. Uh, so this is going to be another Second Chances episode where we've had some monsters that doesn't necessarily get featured, and they're going to have a second chance at love. It's going to be great. Uh, the next thing we have lined up, uh, Horizons Call will be playing every Saturday except for the 24th this month. Again, Marvel Multiverse Day of Doom will be playing every Sunday. Gate Night will be every Tuesday except for the 13th. Uh, but on the 22nd, we have the premiere of a new D&D mini campaign, 12-week campaign that is being run by one of my favorite GMs, Alex, uh, that is called Zenith. It is a high fantasy big city politics backstabbing monsters in the sewers kind of game that i'm super super hyped about uh and that is going to be 4 30 p.m on thursdays 4 30 p.m pacific time uh the last thing this month that's on the calendar so far is our last movie night for the month we're doing our, our ghibli monthly ghibli watch uh with porco rosso and that's going to be on the 23rd at 6 p.m pacific time uh we also do have a, another campaign uh, that is being run by the very wonderful Mare, uh, which is Journey to Book's End. It is a cipher game. Uh, we don't have a specific date, but it will be on a Monday towards the end of the month, so keep posted about that. Um, I believe that is it for Sword and Key. We have more stuff coming. We have the return of Humblewood come September, Humblewood Season 2, uh, which will be in support of Fauna and Flora International, and uh, lots more exciting stuff. So we'll have more applications out down the road. Uh, we're always looking to do more games. We're always looking to raise money for great causes, and always looking to play with fantastic people like the ones you see here. So please go and support the people that you see here um, on their socials, their projects, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and like I said, if you have a couple extra bucks sitting around that you want to put towards PCRF, it's a fantastic cause to do so. You can donate at any time through the link provided in chat and on our socials to impact whatever our next game is. Uh, with that said, that is it for Sword and Key this week. Uh, I believe we are going to be, I believe we're going to be, um, raiding live from the apocalypse. So go so sh show some positivity and support over there. And until next time, uh, make mine marble. Excelsior. And Excelsior. And all the things that Stan used to say. Enough said. Enough said. Thank you. <laughs>